He Qijing and Gao Yaji had been asking questions all the way until they finally arrived at Zhongtian Lakeview Villa No. 1. The two of them were about to call Yifeng. At this moment, a voice suddenly came from the loudspeaker at the door. The door is unlocked. Come in. The two of them hurriedly tidied their clothes and pushed the door open. As soon as they stepped into the villa, the two of them saw a stone placed at the door. This, it looks like a raw jade stone, right? After all, He Qijing was in the construction industry, so he had some knowledge of raw jade. That's right, it's indeed a raw jade stone. Moreover, it's a rare imperial jade. What's even rarer is that size is so big. This, this is worth at least a few hundred million, right? After Gao Yaji saw the raw gemstone, he was even more shocked. A few hundred million? Are you sure? He Qijing was shocked. I'm not mistaken. Our company often ships some raw jade, so I know a little about it. We had a shipment of a piece of rough stone some time ago. Whether it's the size or the material, it's far inferior to this piece. In the end, we sold it for more than 100 million. Gao Yaji was experienced and knowledgeable, so he immediately explained to him. Hiss. He Qijing sucked in a breath of cold air. A few hundred million dollars worth of raw gemstones is actually placed at the door as a decoration? This Mr. Yi was a little too overbearing, isn't he? Gao Yaji nodded in agreement. He's not just arrogant. He's inhumane. As soon as the two of them entered the door, they were put in a tough spot. They respected Mr. Yi even more. This Mr. Yi must be a young, mature, and resourceful super big shot. However, when the two of them entered the living room, they were both dumbfounded. Needless to say, the living room was luxurious. What really stunned them was the man lying on the sofa. He was about 20 years old, which matched the rumored Mr. Yi very well. However, his current image was really a little. It's not very elegant. Yi Feng was half naked, and he was only wearing a pair of pants. His body was filled with silver needles, making him look like a hedgehog. Mr. Yi, what are you doing? Gao Yaji could not help but ask. Yi Feng raised his hand. These two days in Binhai City, the sea breeze blew too much. My body is a little damp. I will do acupuncture. Don't be an outsider. Sit wherever you want. Mr. Yi knows acupuncture? It's really. You're so versatile. He Qijing laughed awkwardly and sat on the sofa with Gao Yaji. Having more skills doesn't weigh down your body. To me, the two most important things are money and life. If you can control it yourself, try not to trouble others. Yi Feng joked as he removed all the silver needles from his body. He Qijing and Gao Yaji also took out the handover documents for him to read. Yi Feng was quite familiar with this. After confirming that there was no problem, he signed on it. Half an hour later, all the documents were signed. These two companies would officially belong to him. Yi Feng brewed a cup of tea for both of them. I don't usually participate in managing the company. I will need your help to manage these two companies in the future. This is what we should do. He Qijing and Gao Yaji raised their teacups and toasted him with tea instead of wine. Currently, the feeling that Yi Feng gave them was more like a boy next door, not like a big shot in the business world. This made them slightly disappointed. Under the leadership of such a boss, would there be a future? Yi Feng leaned on the sofa and crossed his legs. Do you know anything about Tang Fushan? He Qijing and Gao Yaji looked at each other. They finally got to the main topic. We're all building materials workers, so I'm quite familiar with this person. I wonder what Mr. Yi wants to ask. He Qijing was the first to speak. Yi Feng's face had the innocence of a young man. If I want to kill him, what can you do? He Qijing, who was drinking tea, spat it out. He didn't expect Mr. Yi to suddenly ask such a murderous question. This, did Tang Fushan offend you? Why do you want to kill him? He looked at Yi Feng curiously. You don't need to know that. You just need to answer my question. Yi Feng picked up the teacup and tasted to Hong Pao, spitting out a tea leaf. He Qijing knew that Mr. Yi was testing him. If his answer wasn't satisfactory, the other party would probably replace him without hesitation. After thinking for a moment, he spoke again. Actually, if you want to deal with Tang Fushan, now is the best opportunity. Yi Feng raised his eyebrows. What do you mean? He Qijing pondered for a moment and continued. Because there's a problem with the capital chain of Fushan building materials, 
They've been robbing Peter to pay Paul recently. Tang Fushan even came to me and wanted me to help him, but I refused. Yi Feng was curious. Why did you reject him? He Qijing shook his head. Because this person is a little sinister. I don't like to deal with such people. Yi Feng's lips curled up slightly. Then that means you have a way to destroy Fushan building materials? He Qijing patted his chest confidently. If it was in the past, I wouldn't dare to guarantee it. However, with Chairman Gao's cooperation, I can kill him in minutes. Yi Feng turned to look at Gao Yaji. Is that so? Gao Yaji immediately nodded. All the major building materials companies in Yangchang have close cooperation with our company, including Fushan Building Materials. It can be said that in the transportation area of Yangchang, we have already formed a monopoly. Without our permission, they won't be able to move their construction materials. He knew that this was the time to show his strength to his new boss, so he naturally did not dare to hold back. Yi Feng heard his explanation. The smile on his face grew wider. Then what can you do? Tell me. I don't know how Fushan Building Materials got involved with Changfeng Real Estate during this period of time. There's an urgent big order that needs to be transported to Changfeng Real Estate's construction site through our vertical and horizontal transportation. Yi Feng heard Gao Yaji's words and immediately interrupted. Changfeng Real Estate? Is their boss called Wei Changfeng? He suddenly thought of the middle-aged man who publicly suppressed him on the real estate forum that day. Even Luo Jingyuan was wary of this person. Gao Yaji nodded. That's right. It's Wei Changfeng. This person has a lot of power in Yangcheng. I wonder how Tang Fushan fawned over him. Ye Feng Simulet. I understand, continue. If we want Tang Fushan to suffer heavy losses, we can deliberately slow down the speed of transportation. As long as his batch of building materials can't be delivered to the construction site on time and affect the construction progress of Changfeng Real Estate, Wei Changfeng won't let him off. Gao Yaji revealed a shrewd expression. You should have signed the contract, right? If they deliberately slowed down the transportation speed, will Zhonghang Transportation take responsibility? Yi Feng immediately grasped the core of the problem. Gao Yaji could not help but to nod his head. Don't worry. Our contract states that if the transportation speed is slow due to weather, road conditions, or other non-human reasons, our transportation company will not bear any responsibility. As far as I know, there will be a typhoon in the next few days. At this point, a you know expression appeared on his face. Yi Feng also smiled. As expected, the older the wiser. Gao Yaji suddenly hesitated. But there's still a problem. If we do this, we might offend Wei Changfeng. This person's strength was very terrifying. Unless it was absolutely necessary, it was best not to offend him. Yi Feng pursed his lips. I don't care about Wei Changfeng or Wei Duanfeng. My target is Tang Fushan. If I accidentally affect him, then he can only blame his bad luck. Gao Yaji and He Qijing looked at each other and saw the horror in each other's eyes. They were all from Yang Cheng, and they could feel the fear of being dominated by Wei Changfeng for a long time. And Yi Feng, a young man from Zhonghai, did not even care about him. How could they not be surprised? All right, it's settled then. Zhonghang Transportation will be in charge of the main attack, and Tanyue Building Materials will be in charge of the last attack. As for how to implement it, the two of you can discuss it. In short, after three days, I don't want to see the words Fushan Building Materials again. Gao Yaji and He Qijing had no more objections and immediately stood up to leave. After a short period of contact, they already had a preliminary understanding of this new boss. Firstly, he was ruthless enough. Secondly, he had courage. Even if he might offend a strong enemy like Wei Changfeng, he would not hesitate. However, this was not what the two of them valued the most. What they really valued was that the other party could put down his attitude and listen to his subordinates' opinions, and he dared to delegate power. This was too important. If it was a headstrong and suspicious boss, they might turn a deaf ear to their subordinates' opinions and even interfere and point fingers during the execution process. This kind of boss often did not achieve much. It was Yi Feng's first time meeting them today. The entire process took less than an hour. He actually dared to give such an important task to the two of them. Just this trust alone was worth thousands of gold. Yi Feng sent them out of the villa. Looking at the sky, it was already late. 
He thought about how Chin Xin was still working overtime in the company to deal with Fushan building materials difficulties. He immediately returned to the villa and cooked two side dishes. He was not talented in cooking, so it could barely be eaten. However, this was still a gesture of gratitude. He packed the food into the lunchbox and immediately drove to Ling Yun Real Estate. It was already past eight in the evening, but Ling Yun Real Estate was still brightly lit. Everyone was so busy that their feet didn't even touch the ground. Seeing Yi Feng carrying a lunchbox, everyone had a strange expression. After he arrived, they immediately started discussing. Big Boss is here to see President Chin, right? He actually brought food over. Isn't that too considerate? Oh, what should we do? He's so young, so rich, so handsome, and so considerate. I can't take it anymore. Working overtime until late at night is already hard enough, and I've even eaten so much dog food. Mr. Yi should be the perfect boyfriend, right? I really can't imagine a more perfect man than him. If I can be his girlfriend, let me die immediately, but I know I don't deserve it. Me too. Yi Feng carried the lunchbox and came to Chun Xin's office door, knocking on it. Enter. Chun Xin's voice immediately came from inside. He pushed the door open and walked in. He saw Chen Xin buried her head in a small mountain of information without even raising her head. Put all the information on the table and inform them that the meeting will be held in 10 minutes. Chun Xin lowered her head and flipped through the information as she instructed. Have you eaten? Yi Feng saw her workaholic side and felt his heart ache. When Chun Xin heard his voice, she looked up. Why are you here? Yi Feng sat down on his desk. I'm afraid you'll starve to death. Chun Xian shook her head. I'm not hungry. Before she could finish, her stomach immediately let out a rumbling sound. Her face immediately turned red. Yi Feng held back his laughter and took out the food. Hurry up and eat. Only when you are full will you have the strength to fight. Chen Xian took the bowl and chopsticks and took two bites. Tears immediately flowed out. Is this all yours? Why are you so touched that you're crying? Is it that delicious? Yi Feng looked at her tenderly. Touched your head. How much salt did you put in this dish? It's almost salty to death. Chun Xian wiped away her tears, her eyes filled with resentment. No matter what, Chun Xian still gave him face and ate half of the food. All right, I'm full. There's still a lot of work to do. You can go back first. Chen Xian put away the lunchbox and returned it to him. What are you busy with? What time is it? Even if you don't rest, the employees need to rest. Yi Feng snatched the information from her hands and threw it aside. Aya, I have no choice. The main thing is that these things are too troublesome. I have to deal with them as soon as possible. Chen Xian looked helpless. Is it still because of Fushan building materials? Didn't you say that the impact wasn't very big? Yi Feng immediately asked. I underestimated the despicable methods of Fushan building materials this time. They have almost joined forces with all the building materials companies in Yangcheng to block our Lingyun real estate. Chun Xian felt a headache when she mentioned this matter. Is Fushan building materials that influential? Yi Feng was a little surprised. The influence of Fushan building materials is definitely not that great. However, they used Changfeng Real Estate as a cover to force the construction materials companies to make a statement. Those companies are not afraid of Tang Fushan, but they are afraid of Wei Changfeng. When Chun Xian said this, she felt powerless. Then have you thought of a strategy? Yi Feng asked calmly. What else can we do? Our project is about to start, and these building materials cannot be delayed. If it really didn't work, we could only lower our head to them. Chun Xian's tone was filled with unwillingness. She thought that Ling Yun Real Estate would be able to go smoothly after defeating Myo Sidon and the others. Unexpectedly, Tang Fushan appeared out of nowhere. Ye Feng Grabit had hints. Don't worry, I have already settled it for you. In less than three days, there will be no more Fushan building materials on earth. Chin Xian looked at him blankly. You're joking, right? Do you think you are a tyrant? They disappeared with a snap of your fingers? How could they disappear just like that? Then we'll wait and see. Yi Feng patted her small face. At this moment, he was sitting at his desk while Chun Xian was sitting in the boss chair. From this angle, he looked down from above. She was dressed in a black uniform and had beautiful black legs. She was extremely alluring. 
Sister Xian, I seem to remember that we still have one thing to do at the restaurant just now. Chun Xian met his lecherous gaze. How could she not understand the meaning behind his words? Her pretty face immediately turned red. Stop fooling around. We're in the office. What if someone sees us? Yi Feng's finger brushed across her red lips. Then let's be quiet and only have a local war. I don't want to be a hero. Chun Xian immediately refused. But Yi Feng grabbed her hair without any explanation and advanced step by step in the meeting room of Ling Yun Real Estate. The higher ups had already gathered. Director Zhang, why isn't President Chen here yet? Yeah. Didn't you say you were going to have a meeting? We've been waiting for so long. Why isn't she here yet? Hurry up and rush her. Did something happen? Everyone turned to look at Zhang Yaoding. I'll go take a look. Zhang Yaoding had no choice but to get up and walk toward Chun Xian's office. She knocked on the door but there was no sound. Sister Xian, are you inside? There was still no response. She was a little puzzled. Could she have fallen asleep? Thinking of this, she immediately pushed the door open and entered. Then, she saw the two of them quickly separate. Yi Feng's back was facing them. He was sitting on the desk. Chun Xian's mouth was tightly shut, and her beautiful eyes were filled with panic. Zhang Yaoding's eyes flashed with doubt, but she immediately pretended that nothing had happened and walked over. Sister Xian, everyone is already in the meeting room. They're all waiting for you. In. Chun Xian nodded. She just hummed an agreement and did not say anything else. Are you feeling unwell? Do you need me to send you to the hospital? Zhang Yaoding saw that her face was red and immediately became nervous. In. Chun Xian hurriedly shook her head and still did not speak. Then should we still hold the meeting? Zhang Yaoding continued to ask. In. In. Chun Xian first nodded, then shook her head. Do you want it or not? What's that in your mouth? Can't you talk? Zhang Yaoding had the spirit to get to the bottom of things. Yi Feng could not stand it anymore. He quickly stopped her. Sister Xian, we have found a way to deal with Fushan building materials. Oh, all right then. Zhang Yaoding immediately turned around and walked out of the office. When she turned around, her face was already red to the ears. No matter how stupid she was, she had already understood something. These two people are actually very smart. God. Why did you let me see all of this? Until Zhang Yaoding went out and closed the door. Chun Xian quickly took a tissue and rushed into the office bathroom. After a while, she walked out again. Yi Feng, you big bad guy. I hate you to death. When she thought of her embarrassment just now, she felt wronged and her eyes were red. Yi Feng held back his laughter. I didn't expect it either, that she will suddenly barge in. You're still laughing? Do I still have the face to face others in the future? The more Chen Xian spoke, the angrier she became. Tears began to well up in her eyes. If you don't have the face to see people, then don't. You just stay at home. Are you afraid that I can't afford to support you? Yi Feng did not feel ashamed at all. You, from now on, don't even think about touching me for a month. Chun Xian's face turned cold as she gave the most severe punishment. Don't. Are you asking me to be a widow for a month? You are too cruel. Yi Feng was anxious. I am that cruel. I just want to teach you a lesson. Can we discuss this? Two days of punishment is enough. Three days at most. Half a month. Five days is enough, right? At least ten days. I'll take another step back. One week. This is my bottom line. Where are we going? Early the next morning, Yi Feng pulled Chen Xian into the car and drove all the way. Going to put on a show. Yi Feng pretended to smile mysteriously at her. Acting? Do you want to be an actor? Chun Xian was dumbfounded. I want to be a director more than an actor. Yi Feng smiled mysteriously and did not speak anymore. He drove extremely fast, maintaining a speed of about 200 kilometers per hour. The cars on the highway were overtaken one by one. What was rare was that the car was moving so fast, yet there was no discomfort in the car. Although Chen Xian was used to sitting in his car, she was still a little nervous. After driving for two hours, Yi Feng finally got off the highway. When Chen Xian saw the Yang Cheng welcomes you, sign at the toll booth, her mouth fell open. Why did we come to Yang Cheng? To see Tang Fushan, Yi Feng replied nonchalantly. Why are you going to see him? Of course, 
I'm begging him to let Lingyun real estate live. Is this the solution you came up with? Yeah. Isn't it amazing? Stop the car. What's wrong? Yi Feng asked despite knowing the answer. You're my man. Even if Lingyun real estate goes bankrupt, I won't allow you to lower yourself to others. Chun Xin looked at him seriously with a straight face. Yi Feng was amused by her. I was joking with you. Amir Tang Fushan is not worthy of making me bow down to him? Chun Xian looked puzzled. Then why did you go to see him? Yi Feng poked her smooth little face. I already told you. I'm going to act. Why are you still asking so many questions? Just watch the show today. Chen Xian saw that he was pretending to be mysterious and could not help but purse her lips, but she did not say anything else. As long as he didn't beg Tang Fushan, everything was fine. On the other side, at the office building of Fushan Building Materials. Mr. Wei, don't worry. I guarantee with my head that the batch of building materials will be delivered to your construction site on time. Tang Fushan walked out of the office building of Fushan Building Materials in high spirits. Recently, he had just clung onto Wei Chongfing's thigh and had suddenly become a hot potato in Yang Cheng. Those who wanted to curry favor with him had to queue up now. He finally experienced the feeling of being able to call the wind and summon the rain. It was to the extent that he felt a little light when he walked. After hanging up the phone with Wei Chongfeng, he was about to get into the car and leave. Suddenly, he heard a familiar voice behind him. Mr. Tang, please wait a moment. Tang Fushan turned around and saw Yi Feng and Chun Xian walking over quickly. Yi Feng? Why are you here? His eyes were filled with doubt. Yi Feng put on a fawning smile. Mr. Tang, aren't you asking the obvious? You ordered the blockade of Ling Yun Real Estate's construction materials supply. Now that Ling Yun Real Estate has run out of rice, we're all worried to death. Chun Xian watched his performance with a strange expression. This guy's acting skills were really good. If she did not know Yi Feng's evil intentions in advance, she would have been deceived by him. Tang Fushan immediately sneered. So you know how to be afraid? I thought you were so cocky that you didn't put anyone in your eyes. Yi Feng hurriedly nodded in agreement. Previously, I was blind and did not know your strength, Chairman Tang. I hope you can let us go. Tang Fushan turned his head and looked at Chen Xian. Is your boyfriend so useless? I haven't done anything yet and he's already wagging his tail and begging for mercy? Looks like your taste isn't that good. Chun Xian turned away. She was mainly afraid that her acting skills were not good enough and would ruin Yi Feng's plan. However, in Tang Fushan's eyes, it increased his desire to conquer. He immediately turned to look at Yi Feng. It is not impossible for me to let you off? Yi Feng immediately pretended to be all ears. Please speak. Tang Fushan pointed at Chun Xian. I'm meeting a very important guest tonight. I'll let your girlfriend accompany me to attend and help me drink. Do you have any objections? Yi Feng's expression turned cold. Is it just blocking the wine? Tang Fushan did not hide his dirty thoughts at all. Of course, if she gets drunk, I will personally send her back to the hotel and help you take good care of her. Yi Feng could no longer continue acting. He slowly stood up straight. Tang Fushan actually... I came here today to give you one last chance and consider letting you live. But now, I've changed my mind. When Tang Fushan heard his words, he immediately laughed wildly. You're letting me live? Did I hear wrongly? Who's begging who now? Yi Feng smiled again. For a mad dog like you, we must kill them. We cannot give any hope of survival. Tang Fushan pretended to be afraid. Tsk, 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 you scared me to death. You must kill me completely. Don't give me any hope. Because as long as there is a glimmer of hope, I will find a way to trample you to death. Yi Feng nodded with a smile. It's better to obey than to be respectful. I hope you remember what you said today, because you might regret it very soon. Tang Fu Shan's my contempu. Don't worry, I will never regret what I have done or said. As he spoke, he turned to look at Qin Xian. You know how I feel about you. As long as you think about it carefully, call me anytime. The door of my house will always be open to you, ha ha ha. After saying that, he got into the car and left. At this moment, a thunderclap suddenly exploded. Dark clouds covered the sky, making it hard for people to breathe. The typhoon is about to come. Yang Chung is too dangerous. 
We have to go back to Zhonghai to avoid the wind, Yi Feng said with a double meaning. He pulled the dumbfounded Qin, Xian into the car, and left. A massive storm had begun to brew. Katcha, it was raining and windy outside. His mind was filled with the image of another woman. I will definitely get you. Tang Fushan secretly made up his mind. At this moment, his phone suddenly rang. He took it over and saw that the caller ID was Wei Chong phone. He did not dare to delay and hurriedly answered the call. Tang Fushan, where's your batch of building materials? Why can't I see a single strand of hair? As soon as the call was connected, Wei Chongfeng's voice was heard. Mr. Wei, you can rest assured that I will be able to deliver the project to your construction site before 5 p.m. It will not delay your project, Tang Fushan hurriedly promised. Cinco o'clock? It's already 5.30 a.m. You're still not awake, are you? Wei Chongfeng roared angrily. Half past five. Tang Fushan was stunned for a moment before he hurriedly checked the time. Indeed, it was already half past five. Logically speaking, that batch of construction materials should have arrived long ago. He hurriedly pushed the flirtatious woman to the ground and said carefully, Mr. Wei, don't worry. I'll call the transportation company and ask them what's going on. Tang Fushan, I gave you such an important business because I took care of you. If you screw this up, I won't let you off. Wei Chongfeng hung up the phone angrily. Tang Fushan was stunned for a while. Then he hurriedly called Gao Yaji, the chairman of Zhongheng Transportation Company. Hello, Chairman Gao. Where is my batch of building materials now? As soon as the call went through, he went straight to the point. Oh, you're building materials? In the warehouse. Gao Yaji's slow voice came from the other side. Warehouse? Which warehouse? Tang Fushan hurriedly asked. It's still in the Yangcheng warehouse. There's a typhoon today, so there's no way to transport it. Before Gao Yaji could finish, Tang Fushan stood up in shock. What did you say? In the warehouse in Yangcheng? Chairman Gao, don't play with me. Didn't we agree that we would deliver it to the construction site in Pu City, 200 kilometers away before 5 o'clock today? Boss Tang, you have to understand. How can we transport it in this weather? When the weather is better tomorrow, I'll definitely send it to you. Tomorrow? Are you kidding me? If I don't deliver it today, Mr. Wei will kill me. No matter what, you have to deliver the construction materials to the construction site in Pu City tonight. Boss Tang, you can't do it even if you kill me. Even if they moved the materials out of the warehouse now, then loaded them into the truck, transported them, and unloaded them, they will definitely not be able to arrive tonight. I. Tang Fushan was a little mad. Go to the warehouse in Yangcheng now. I have to talk to you face to face. After hanging up the phone, he hurriedly put on his clothes. Because he had taken too many drugs, he was still a little weak. However, he couldn't care less now. He immediately headed out in a hurry. The wind and rain outside were very scary. The roadside fences and shared bicycles were blown all over the street. However, he couldn't care less now and immediately drove away. When he rushed to the Yangcheng warehouse, he saw the building materials piled up in the warehouse. He felt dizzy and almost fell over. At this moment, Gao Yaji also rushed over in his raincoat. Boss Tang, as you can see, the storm is too strong now. The highway has been blocked, and the trucks can't run at all. Tang Fushan hurriedly grabbed his arm as if he was a life-saving straw. If we can't run on the highway, if you let them take the small roads, I'll give them double their salary. No, three times. Gao Yaji pushed his hand away. This isn't about the salary. The path is too dangerous. If anything happens, I can't bear the responsibility. Tang Fushan completely collapsed and roared, I don't care. Anyway, you have to deliver these building materials tonight. Otherwise, you're breaching the contract. Gao Yaji's face darkened. Then you can go ahead and sue me. Our contract states that if the weather, road conditions, and other non-human factors cause the goods to not be delivered on time, the transportation company will not bear any responsibility. Tang Fushan was stunned for a while and suddenly knelt on the ground. Chairman Gao, I'm begging you. You have to help me. As long as you help me get through this crisis, you will be my savior. I will definitely repay you heavily. There was no trace of pity in Gao Yaji's eyes. I'm sorry, I can't risk my brother's lives. If you want to transport these building materials, 
you have to wait until the wind and rain dissipate. After saying that, he turned around and left resolutely. Tang Fushan couldn't take it anymore and fell to the ground. His mind was blank, and he didn't know what to do. At this moment, his phone rang again. It was Wei Chongfeng again. He picked up the phone while trembling, and a furious roar immediately came from the other end. Tang Fushan, what happened to those building materials? My construction site is about to be shut down. The loss of such a large construction site for a day may be as high as 10 million. Can you bear this responsibility? Tang Fushan opened his mouth. Mr. Wei, the building materials company said that they couldn't transport it because of the storm. It would only be delivered after the storm had stopped. Be asterisk starred. Who knows when this storm will stop? If it can't be stopped in 10 days to half a month, I'll just wait? Then who will be responsible for my losses? One could imagine how furious Wei Changfeng was. If he was in front of him, he could probably strangle him to death. Tang Fushan completely collapsed. Mr. Wei, don't force me anymore. I have no choice. Wei Changfeng hung up the phone and sat on the sofa in a daze. Even though he was usually resourceful, he was completely flustered at this moment. Tang Fushan's batch of building materials would definitely not be delivered. What about his project? This was a key project in Yangcheng. Back then, in order to get this project, Changfeng Real Estate had gone through many channels and used all kinds of underhanded methods. It was not easy to get the project, but now something like this had happened. How was he going to explain this to the company? After all, Tang Fushan was the supplier that he had changed against all odds. Naturally, he had to bear the consequences. Just as he was thinking hard about countermeasures, his phone suddenly rang. The caller ID was He Qizheng, the chairman of Tanyue Building Materials. Tanyue Building Materials was a former supplier of Changfeng Real Estate. In order to hand over the business to Tang Fushan, he had terminated the contract with Tanyue Building Materials. He just didn't know why He Qizheng was calling now. Although he was puzzled, he still answered the call. Hello, Mr. Wei. Did I disturb you? He Qijing's voice came from the phone. Is there something you need? Wei Changfeng wasn't in a good mood, so his tone wasn't good either. I heard that there's a problem with the building materials you ordered from Tang Fushan. He didn't deliver it on time? He Qijing's voice was filled with schadenfreude. Wei Changfeng gritted his teeth and asked, Are you here to laugh at me? Because I replaced your Tanyue building materials, and now I'm tasting the bitter fruit? Help me? How? I happen to have a batch of building materials on hand. If you need them, I'll send them to you now. Wei Changfeng immediately stood up from the sofa in shock. Are you serious? Where are the building materials? When will it arrive? It's in the Pu City warehouse, less than 20 kilometers from your construction site. It'll be delivered tonight, He Qijing immediately replied. This news was a huge surprise for Wei Changfeng. It was like a person who was about to die of thirst when someone suddenly handed him a ladle of water. Wei Changfeng was not overwhelmed by the surprise and asked again, How much is this batch of building materials? Is the quality up to standard? Mr. Wei, don't worry. I have as many as you ordered from Tang Fushan. Don't worry about the quality. We are also a big company. We won't do such a thing. Besides, who would dare to fool you, Mr. Wei? He Qijing immediately reassured him. Wei Changfeng was completely relieved. Chairman He, you've solved my urgent problem this time. I, Wei Changfeng, will remember this kindness in my heart and will repay it in the future. At this moment, He Qijing chuckled. We'll talk about it later. It's just that the price of this batch of building materials. Wei Changfeng immediately understood. There's no problem with the price. Name your price. I heard that the total price of Tang Fushan's batch of building materials is about 50 million. How about this? Under the condition of ensuring the same quantity and quality, I'll ask you for 100 million. How? How much? 100 million? Are you crazy? Why don't you rob it? When Wei Changfeng heard the other party's bid, he was so angry that he almost vomited blood. The price had doubled. Wasn't that too much? He Qijing's voice came again. Mr. Wei, you have to understand. The storm outside is so big. I'm just making some hard-earned money. Wei Changfeng gritted his teeth. You're taking advantage of a burning house. He Qijing sounded a little unhappy. If you say that, then it's meaningless. If the deal doesn't work out, 
I'm still benevolent. If you don't want to buy it, then forget it. I'm not forcing you. I'm hanging up. Wait a minute. Wei Chongfeng hurriedly stopped him. He Qijing, you have to think carefully. I'm a person who holds grudges. You cheated me today. When I have the time, I might return the favor. He Qijing immediately burst into laughter. Mr. Wei, this is a lawful society. It's quite scary. Wei Chongfeng gritted his teeth. All right, send that batch of construction materials to my construction site now. I'll buy them. No problem. You can transfer 50 million yuan in advance. The construction materials will be delivered soon. He Qijing hung up the phone after he finished speaking happily. Wei Chongfeng angrily threw his phone on the sofa. He finally understood what it meant to be bullied by dogs. He was the chairman of Chongfeng Real Estate, the Mr. Wei who answered all calls in Yangcheng. He was actually forced to sign a treaty that would humiliate the country. This was simply a great humiliation. However, the situation was stronger than him. If he didn't have this batch of building materials to save his life, his construction site would have to stop working, and his daily losses would be as high as 10 million yuan. More importantly, once the news got out, it would have a huge impact on the image of their project. Therefore, he had no choice but to compromise. When this matter was over, he would settle the score with that be asterisk starred. He Qijing was hanging up Wei Chongfeng's phone with a cold smile on his face. He raised his head and looked at Tang Fushan, who was crying not far away. Next, it's your turn. He immediately walked over with a harmless smile. Boss Tang, what's wrong with you? Why are you crying in the heavy rain? Who bullied you? His tone was a little annoying. However, Tang Fushan was not in the mood to care about this now. He immediately grabbed his hand and cried. I have a batch of construction materials that I wanted to send to Pu City, but Gao Yaji told me that the storm is too strong. I messed up Mr. Wei's matter, and there's a problem with the company's capital chain. I'm finished. He Qijing could not help but shake his head and sigh. He didn't expect the boss of Fushan Building Materials to cry like a child who weighed more than 200 pounds. Then I'll be an angel and save you. Boss Tang, I'll give you a clear path to take. Wei Chongfeng hung up the phone and sat on the sofa in a daze. Even though he was usually resourceful, he was completely flustered at this moment. Tang Fushan's batch of building materials would definitely not be delivered. What about his project? This was a key project in Yangcheng. Back then, in order to get this project, Chongfeng Real Estate had gone through many channels and used all kinds of underhanded methods. It was not easy to get the project, but now something like this had happened. How was he going to explain this to the company? After all, Tang Fushan was the supplier that he had changed against all odds. Naturally, he had to bear the consequences. Just as he was thinking hard about countermeasures, his phone suddenly rang. The caller ID was He Qijing, the chairman of Tanyue Building Materials. Tanyue Building Materials was a former supplier of Changfeng Real Estate. In order to hand over the business to Tang Fushan, he had terminated the contract with Tanyue Building Materials. He just didn't know why He Qijing was calling now. Although he was puzzled, he still answered the call. Hello, Mr. Wei. Did I disturb you? He Qijing's voice came from the phone. Is there something you need? Wei Changfeng wasn't in a good mood, so his tone wasn't good either. I heard that there's a problem with the building materials you ordered from Tang Fushan. He didn't deliver it on time? He Qijing's voice was filled with schadenfreude. Wei Changfeng gritted his teeth and asked, Are you here to laugh at me? Because I replaced your Tanyue building materials, and now I'm tasting the bitter fruit? Help me? How? I happen to have a batch of building materials on hand. If you need them, I'll send them to you now. Wei Changfeng immediately stood up from the sofa in shock. Are you serious? Where are the building materials? When will it arrive? It's in the Pu City warehouse, less than 20 kilometers from your construction site. It'll be delivered tonight, He Qijing immediately replied. This news was a huge surprise for Wei Changfeng. It was like a person who was about to die of thirst when someone suddenly handed him a ladle of water. Wei Changfeng was not overwhelmed by the surprise and asked again, How much is this batch of building materials? Is the quality up to standard? Mr. Wei, don't worry. I have as many as you ordered from Tang Fushan. Don't worry about the quality. We are also a big company. We won't do such a thing. Besides, who would dare to fool you, Mr. Wei? 
He Qi Jing immediately reassured him. Wei Chongfeng was completely relieved. Chairman He, you've solved my urgent problem this time. I, Wei Chongfeng, will remember this kindness in my heart and will repay it in the future. At this moment, He Qi Jing chuckled. We'll talk about it later. It's just that the price of this batch of building materials. Wei Chongfeng immediately understood. There's no problem with the price. Name your price. I heard that the total price of Tang Fushan's batch of building materials is about 50 million. How about this? Under the condition of ensuring the same quantity and quality, I'll ask you for 100 million. How? How much? 100 million? Are you crazy? Why don't you rob it? When Wei Chongfeng heard the other party's bid, he was so angry that he almost vomited blood. The price had doubled. Wasn't that too much? He Qi Jing's voice came again. Mr. Wei, you have to understand. The storm outside is so big. I'm just making some hard-earned money. Wei Chongfeng gritted his teeth. You're taking advantage of a burning house. He Qi Jing sounded a little unhappy. If you say that, then it's meaningless. If the deal doesn't work out, I'm still benevolent. If you don't want to buy it, then forget it. I'm not forcing you. I'm hanging up. Wait a minute. Wei Chongfeng hurriedly stopped him. He Qi Jing. You have to think carefully. I'm a person who holds grudges. You cheated me today. When I have the time, I might return the favor. He Qi Jing immediately burst into laughter. Mr. Wei, this is a lawful society. It's quite scary. Wei Chongfeng gritted his teeth. All right, send that batch of construction materials to my construction site now. I'll buy them. No problem. You can transfer 50 million yuan in advance. The construction materials will be delivered soon. He Qi Jing hung up the phone after he finished speaking happily. Wei Chongfeng angrily threw his phone on the sofa. He finally understood what it meant to be bullied by dogs. He was the chairman of Chongfeng Real Estate, the Mr. Wei who answered all calls in Yangcheng. He was actually forced to sign a treaty that would humiliate the country. This was simply a great humiliation. However, the situation was stronger than him. If he didn't have this batch of building materials to save his life, his construction site would have to stop working and his daily losses would be as high as 10 million yuan. More importantly, once the news got out, it would have a huge impact on the image of their project. Therefore, he had no choice but to compromise. When this matter was over, he would settle the score with that B asterisk start. He Qi Jing was hanging up Wei Chongfeng's phone with a cold smile on his face. He raised his head and looked at Tang Fushan, who was crying not far away. Next, it's your turn. He immediately walked over with a harmless smile. Boss Tang, what's wrong with you? Why are you crying in the heavy rain? Who bullied you? His tone was a little annoying. However, Tang Fushan was not in the mood to care about this now. He immediately grabbed his hand and cried. I have a batch of construction materials that I wanted to send to Pu City, but Gao Yaji told me that the storm is too strong. I messed up Mr. Wei's matter, and there's a problem with the company's capital chain. I'm finished. He Qi Jing could not help but shake his head and sigh. He didn't expect the boss of Fushan Building Materials to cry like a child who weighed more than 200 pounds. Then I'll be an angel and save you. Boss Tang, I'll give you a clear path to take. How much do you want to add? Tang Fushan looked at Gao Yaji with a wary expression. Gao Yaji took out his calculator and tapped on it. Let me calculate for you. Porter, truck, driver. I won't ask you for more. I'll give you five million. Cough, cough, cough. When Tang Fushan heard this number, he almost choked to death. Did I hear wrongly? Five million? Previously, when it was sent to Pu City, which was 200 kilometers away, it only cost one million yuan. Now, you want me to send it to Zhang Jiapa? which is 20 kilometers away, and you want me to pay 5 million? Are you robbing me? Gao Yaji hurriedly shook his head. Hey, don't say that. Robbery is not as profitable as this. Tang Fushan stood up abruptly. Since you're so insincere, then forget it. I'll find another transportation company. I don't believe that there are no other transportation companies in the entire Yangcheng besides your company. Gao Yaji crossed his legs. In the transportation circle of Yangcheng, as long as I, Gao Yaji, announce it, I'll see who dares to accept your order. Tang Fushan had almost walked out of the office. When he heard this, he turned back. 
He knew that Gao Yaji was telling the truth. In the transportation circle of Yang Cheng, Gao Yaji was like a local tyrant. Who would offend this local emperor for a declining Tang Fushan? Can the shipping costs be cheaper? Five million is too expensive. Not a single cent less. If you hesitate any longer, the price will increase again later. Gao Yaji immediately rejected his request. Tang Fushan clenched his fists and calculated in his heart. If this batch of building materials could not be delivered to the warehouse on time, the remaining 10 million yuan would not be received. Compared to the 10 million, this 5 million was still acceptable. He scratched his head hard and slammed the table with a bang. 5 million it is. Remember how you tricked me today. I will take revenge in the future. Gao Gaoji immediately smiled. We'll talk about the future later. Who knows which comes first, tomorrow or death? Tang Fushan felt his chest tighten. However, he didn't want to cause any more trouble now, so he immediately signed a transportation contract with Gao Yaji. Then, he transferred 5 million to the other party's account. I hope you can be punctual this time around. Otherwise, Tang Fushan waved his fist at Gao Yaji. The threat was obvious. Gao Yaji immediately greeted him with a smile. Don't worry, Boss Tang. I'll definitely deliver it to them on time this time. Tang Fushan snorted and walked out. Before he could step out of the office, he suddenly heard Gao Yaji exclaim, Boss Tang, something bad has happened. Tang Fushan hurriedly turned around. What's wrong? Gao Yaji held his phone and pointed at the screen. The news just reported that there was a mudslide at Zhangjiapa. The road was washed away and vehicles are unable to enter. Pfft. Tang Fushan couldn't hold on any longer and spat out a mouthful of blood. Then, he fell to the ground, unconscious. When his consciousness dissipated, he could still hear Gao Yaji's voice. Boss Tang, you have to die outside. Don't die here. There was hatred in his heart. A bunch of birdmen. When he woke up again, he was already in the hospital ward. Vice President Yao of the company stood in front of the hospital bed. Vice President Yao, why are you here? He struggled to support his body and leaned against the hospital bed. I have two pieces of news that I want to report to you as soon as possible. Vice President Yao pushed his gold-rimmed glasses up the bridge of his nose and looked depressed. Tang Fushan had already understood what he meant from his expression. There was probably bad news again. Sai, tell me the news first. Let me be happy first. Uh, one is bad news, and the other is even worse news. Vice President Yao shattered his fantasy. Tang Fushan felt the urge to vomit blood again, so he quickly suppressed it. Then let's start with the bad news. Vice President Yao let out a long sigh. The legal department of Tanyue Building Materials called and said that because our building materials were not delivered on time, their business was delayed. The remaining 10 million will become their compensation. Tang Fushan revealed a bitter smile. My building materials that are worth more than 50 million are only left with 5 million? Is there anyone more stupid than me in this world? Vice President Yao hurriedly lowered his head, not knowing how to answer this question. Tang Fushan waved his hand. Tell me the other bad news. Vice President Yao cleared his throat. Changfeng Real Estate's legal department sent a lawyer's letter saying that because our construction materials were not delivered in time, they suffered heavy losses. They are requesting compensation of 300 million yuan. Tang Fushan laughed bitterly again. 300 million compensation? They really think highly of me. But then again, it was indeed me who ruined Mr. Wei's plan this time. I caused his project to be suspended and let down his good intentions. Vice President Yao coughed dryly. As far as I know, Mr. Wei's construction site hasn't stopped. They found another building materials company and bought the building materials. However, I heard that they had been ripped off quite ruthlessly, spending a total of 100 million. Tang Fushan turned around abruptly. Another building materials company? Which one? Tanyue Building Materials. Tanyue Building Materials? How did they send so many construction materials to Pu City? I heard that Tanyue Building Materials has a warehouse in Pu City. It's only about 20 kilometers away from Mr. Wei's construction site. That's why they were able to fill in the vacancy in time. Tang Fushan immediately fell into deep thought after hearing his story. The more he thought about it, the more he felt that something was wrong. 
He had never heard of Tanueb Building Materials having a warehouse in Pooh City. To be able to store such a large amount of building materials, how big must the warehouse be? It couldn't be that he hadn't heard anything about it, right? The more he thought about everything that had happened today, the more suspicious it became. Help me find out where He Qijing has been during this period of time. Vice President Yao was already confident. I've already checked. He went to Zhonghai two days ago. Tang Fushan was stunned. He went to Zhonghai? Why did he go to Zhonghai? Vice President Yao looked at him strangely. He went to see Yi Feng. Who? Yi Feng. Tang Fushan felt as if he had been struck by lightning. How did He Qijing get involved with Yi Feng? Tang Fushan blurted out subconsciously. However, the blow was not over yet. Then, Vice President Yao continued, It is said that on that day, there was another person who went to see Yi Feng with He Qijing. Tang Fushan turned to look at him. Who else? Vice President Yao hesitated for a moment, but in the end, he still told the truth, Gao Yaji. When Tang Fushan heard this name, he felt like he was struck by lightning again. He Qijing and Gao Yaji went to meet Yi Feng, and then, he suffered the biggest blow in his life today. These two were the ones who had toyed with him. Was this a coincidence, or had it been planned for a long time? Tang Fushan's mind quickly flashed through the experiences of the past few days. First, Yi Feng drove to Yang Chong to give him an ultimatum, but he rejected it. Then, Gao Yaji inexplicably stopped him from shipping his construction materials. Immediately after, He Qijing jumped out and bargained at an extremely low price. In the end, Gao Yaji gave him another fatal blow. The truth had already surfaced. The mastermind behind this series of events was Yi Feng. Tang Fushan felt his chest heat up when he got this answer, and he had the urge to vomit blood again. Yi Feng, you are so ruthless. Tang Fushan couldn't hold it in anymore and roared toward the sky. He could have used this opportunity to get close to Wei Chongfeng and rise to the top. But in the end, under Yi Feng's scheme, not only did he lose this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, he even ended up bankrupt and even faced sky-high compensation. He fell straight from heaven to hell. Vice President Yao gritted his teeth. President Tang, how should we fight back now? Counterattack? What do you want me to use to counterattack? Our Fushan building materials financial chain is already in danger. After this blow, do we still have the strength to fight back? Tang Fushan immediately asked. Vice President Yao was speechless. With the current situation of Fushan building materials, it was unknown whether they could survive this crisis. How could they fight back? Arrange a car immediately. I'm going to Zhonghai. Tang Fushan thought about it and immediately made a decision. Go to Zhonghai? Could you be? You want to fight Yi Feng to the death? You can't do that. Vice President Yao hurriedly tried to persuade him. Fight to death? Fight with your F asterisk king life. I'm going to F asterisk king beg for mercy, Tang Fushan said hatefully as he got off the bed. Vice President Yao hurriedly chased after him. Do you want to wait until you're better? What are you waiting for? When I recover, the company will collapse. Tang Fushan put on his clothes and immediately pushed the door open. Yi Feng hung up the call with Gao Yaji and He Qijing. His lips curled into a smile as he turned to look at Chen Xian. All right, you won't hear the name Fushan building materials again. Chen Xian, who was leaning against him and reading a book, was stunned. What do you mean? Before Yi Feng could explain, she received a call from Zhang Yaoding. The suppliers who were threatened by Tang Fushan and made things difficult for Lingyun real estate suddenly had a 180-degree change in attitude. They were actually fighting to resume their cooperation with Lingyun real estate. Moreover, the construction materials suppliers expressed their willingness to lower their prices further as an apology. Chun Xian hung up the phone and could not come back to her senses for a long time. You, how did you do it? It's just a small trick. Ye think simulate mysteriously. Chun Xian stared at him blankly, her heart filled with mixed feelings. I feel like I'm a piece of trash in front of you. Every time I encounter difficulties, you're the one who helps me solve them. Ye think who get her cylinder waste. Don't say that. You're still very outstanding. Aren't you the one in charge of the company's daily affairs? Chen Xian's heart throbbed, and she immediately kissed him on the lips. Yi Feng looked at her charming little face. His heart immediately shook, 
and he was about to go all out. At this moment, his phone suddenly rang. It was the security guard. He was a little confused, but he still picked up the call. Hello, Mr. Yi. There's a Mr. Tang Fushan outside who claims to be from Yangcheng. He wants to see you. Do you want us to let him in? Chun Xian also heard the guard's words. She looked at Yi Feng in a daze. Tang Fushan is here? What is he doing here? Yi Feng frowned and pondered for a moment before ordering the guard, I don't want to see him. Let him go back? Before he could finish, he heard Tang Fushan's urgent voice. Mr. Yi, I just want to see you. Please give me a chance. Yi Feng slowly leaned against the sofa. But I don't want to see you. If you have anything to say, let's talk over the phone. Mr. Yi, I know I was wrong. I only beg you to let me off this time. I will definitely remember your kindness. Tang Fushan, I personally went to Yang Cheng that day to give you a chance, but you rejected it. Do you still remember what you said that day? Mr. Yi, I. At that time, you said, you must kill me and not give me any hope. Because as long as there is a glimmer of hope, I will find a way to trample you to death. At the entrance of Zhongtian Lakeview Villa Complex, Tang Fushan was completely panicking. These words were indeed said by him. But at that time, he had clung onto Wei Changfeng's thigh. His meteoric rise was just around the corner. He did not put Yi Feng in his eyes at all. Who would have thought that in just two to three days, the situation would have turned 180 degrees? Mr. Yi, I was possessed at that time. I hope you can be magnanimous and give me another chance. I don't want to talk nonsense with you anymore. I gave you a chance, but you didn't cherish it. Now, you're on your own. Mr. Yi, do you really want to kill me? Is my meaning not obvious enough? You. Tang Fushan held back his anger. Mr. Yi, I just want a way out. If you don't agree, I'll kneel here and not leave. If you want to kneel, then kneel. After Yi Feng finished speaking, he hung up the phone. Tang Fushan gritted his teeth and kneeled in the heavy rain. His subordinate handed him the umbrella, but he pushed it away. He was instantly drenched. The security guards at the door were dumbfounded. Someone came to kneel to Mr. Yi again? Was this Mr. Yi Buddha? Why did people come to kneel every two or three days? How did he Qi Jing get involved with Yi Feng? Tang Fushan blurted out subconsciously. However, the blow was not over yet. Then, Vice President Yao continued, It is said that on that day, there was another person who went to see Yi Feng with Yi Qi Jing. Tang Fushan turned to look at him. Who else? Vice President Yao hesitated for a moment, but in the end, he still told the truth, Gao Yaji. When Tang Fushan heard this name, he felt like he was struck by lightning again. He Qi Jing and Gao Yaji went to meet Yi Feng, and then, he suffered the biggest blow in his life today. These two were the ones who had toyed with him. Was this a coincidence, or had it been planned for a long time? Tang Fushan's mind quickly flashed through the experiences of the past few days. First, Yi Feng drove to Yang Chong to give him an ultimatum, but he rejected it. Then, Gao Yaji inexplicably stopped him from shipping his construction materials. Immediately after, He Qi Jing jumped out and bargained at an extremely low price. In the end, Gao Yaji gave him another fatal blow. The truth had already surfaced. The mastermind behind this series of events was Yi Feng. Tang Fushan felt his chest heat up when he got this answer and he had the urge to vomit blood again. Yi Feng, you are so ruthless. Tang Fushan couldn't hold it in anymore and roared toward the sky. He could have used this opportunity to get close to Wei Chongfeng and rise to the top. But in the end, under Yi Feng's scheme, not only did he lose this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, he even ended up bankrupt and even faced sky-high compensation. He fell straight from heaven to hell. Vice President Yao gritted his teeth. President Tang, how should we fight back now? Counterattack? What do you want me to use to counterattack? Our Fushan building materials financial chain is already in danger. After this blow, do we still have the strength to fight back? Tang Fushan immediately asked. Vice President Yao was speechless. With the current situation of Fushan building materials, it was unknown whether they could survive this crisis. How could they fight back? Arrange a car immediately. I'm going to Zhonghai. Tang Fushan thought about it and immediately made a decision. Go to Zhonghai? Could you be? You want to fight Yi Feng to the death? You can't do that. 
Vice President Yao hurriedly tried to persuade him. Fight to death? Fight with your F asterisk king life. I'm going to F asterisk king beg for mercy, Tang Fushan said hatefully as he got off the bed. Vice President Yao hurriedly chased after him. Do you want to wait until you're better? What are you waiting for? When I recover, the company will collapse. Tang Fushan put on his clothes and immediately pushed the door open. Yi Feng hung up the call with Gao Yaji and He Qijing. His lips curled into a smile as he turned to look at Chen Xian. All right, you won't hear the name Fushan building materials again. Chen Xian, who was leaning against him and reading a book, was stunned. What do you mean? Before Yi Feng could explain, she received a call from Zhang Yaoding. The suppliers who were threatened by Tang Fushan and made things difficult for Lingyun real estate suddenly had a 180-degree change in attitude. They were actually fighting to resume their cooperation with Lingyun real estate. Moreover, the construction materials suppliers expressed their willingness to lower their prices further as an apology. Chun Xian hung up the phone and could not come back to her senses for a long time. You, how did you do it? It's just a small trick. Ye feng similet mysteriously. Chun Xian stared at him blankly, her heart filled with mixed feelings. I feel like I'm a piece of trash in front of you. Every time I encounter difficulties, you're the one who helps me solve them. Ye feng who get her cylinder waist. Don't say that. You're still very outstanding. Aren't you the one in charge of the company's daily affairs? Chen Xian's heart throbbed, and she immediately kissed him on the lips. Yi Feng looked at her charming little face. His heart immediately shook, and he was about to go all out. At this moment, his phone suddenly rang. It was the security guard. He was a little confused, but he still picked up the call. Hello, Mr. Yi. There's a Mr. Tang Fushan outside who claims to be from Yangcheng. He wants to see you. Do you want us to let him in? Chun Xian also heard the guard's words. She looked at Yi Feng in a daze. Tang Fushan is here? What is he doing here? Yi Feng frowned and pondered for a moment before ordering the guard, I don't want to see him. Let him go back? Before he could finish, he heard Tang Fushan's urgent voice. Mr. Yi, I just want to see you. Please give me a chance. Yi Feng slowly leaned against the sofa. But I don't want to see you. If you have anything to say, let's talk over the phone. Mr. Yi, I know I was wrong. I only beg you to let me off this time. I will definitely remember your kindness. Tang Fushan, I personally went to Yang Cheng that day to give you a chance, but you rejected it. Do you still remember what you said that day? Mr. Yi, I. At that time, you said, you must kill me and not give me any hope. Because as long as there is a glimmer of hope, I will find a way to trample you to death. At the entrance of Zhongtian Lakeview Villa Complex, Tang Fushan was completely panicking. These words were indeed said by him. But at that time, he had clung onto Wei Changfeng's thigh. His meteoric rise was just around the corner. He did not put Yi Feng in his eyes at all. Who would have thought that in just two to three days, the situation would have turned 180 degrees. Mr. Yi, I was possessed at that time. I hope you can be magnanimous and give me another chance. I don't want to talk nonsense with you anymore. I gave you a chance, but you didn't cherish it. Now, you're on your own. Mr. Yi, do you really want to kill me? Is my meaning not obvious enough? You, Tang Fushan held back his anger. Mr. Yi, I just want a way out. If you don't agree, I'll kneel here and not leave. If you want to kneel, then kneel. After Yi Feng finished speaking, he hung up the phone. Tang Fushan gritted his teeth and kneeled in the heavy rain. His subordinate handed him the umbrella, but he pushed it away. He was instantly drenched. The security guards at the door were dumbfounded. Someone came to kneel to Mr. Yi again? Was this Mr. Yi Buddha? Why did people come to kneel every two or three days? Don't worry. Your friend is very powerful now. He doesn't need our help at all. Tam Bohong stopped teasing her and told her the truth. Lu Xiaoya was stunned. Even you say he's powerful? Really? Lu Changsheng laughed. A billion dollar boss just kneeled in front of his door for two hours and begged for mercy. He didn't even get to see him. Don't you think he's powerful? Lu Xiaoya's jaw dropped in shock. A billion dollar boss had knelt for two hours and begged for mercy? He didn't even see him? Was this guy so powerful now? Lu Changsheng glanced at her and said, 
You've been fishing for a long time, but you haven't caught a fish. If you can catch a rich husband, that would be great. Lu Xiaoya blushed again. I can't be bothered with you guys. After saying that, she quickly fled. The news of Tang Fushan begging Yi Feng in the rain spread like wildfire in Zhonghai. Everyone had once again witnessed the means of this newly risen Mr. Yi. For a moment, they were all silent toward Yi Feng. Yi Feng also received calls from Kong Xianghui and his friends. They all expressed their admiration. By the time he was done dealing with these people, it was already late at night. Yi Feng yawned and prepared to rest. At this moment, he suddenly received a call from Lu Xiaoya. Mr. Yi, you're so mighty now. It's really an honor for you to pick up my call. As soon as the call connected, Lu Xiaoya's teasing voice was heard. Yi Feng sat back on the sofa and replied with a smile. I don't have to answer anyone's call, but I have to answer yours. Why? Because you're Tam Bohong's granddaughter. Who would dare not answer your call? Are you answering my call because of my grandfather? You. You big pig trotter. I'm going to hang up. Don't hang up. I'm just joking. After all, we're still good friends, aren't we? I thought you've become the respected Mr. Yi and don't care about being friends with me. How can that be? Even if I become the President of the United States, you're still my friend. You're the President of the United States? Why don't you become the Emperor? If I become the Emperor, there will be a place for you in the harem. Go to H. Galel, who cares? Seriously, are you free tomorrow? Why? Do you want to sleep with me? Sleep your head? I just felt that we haven't seen each other for a while, so we can go out for a meal. Then I'll have to check my schedule first. You know, I'm very busy now. TSK, stinky man. Forget it then. Don't. I've looked at my schedule. I can take an hour to eat with you. Then thank you, Mr. Yi, for giving me face. I'll send you the address of the restaurant later. All right. The next day, when Yi Feng woke up, Chun Xian had already gone to the company. She even left him a note. The gist of it was that Lingyun Real Estate's old renovation project was about to start. She would be very busy during this period of time and would not be coming to Zhongtian Lakeview Villa for the time being. Yi Feng looked at the huge room. It seemed like he was going to have to stay alone again. As usual, he practiced his boxing and studied his medical skills. He then changed into a casual outfit and drove his lichen to the appointment. The address Lu Xiaoya had given him was a farmhouse in the outer suburbs. The distance was a little far, about 30 kilometers. Fortunately, there was plenty of time. He was not in a hurry to rush. He drove slowly while admiring the scenery along the way. When he was less than 10 kilometers away from the farmhouse, without warning, a system notification rang in his ears. The system has detected a new treasure navigation system. Please go straight for 100 meters and turn right. Yi Feng could not help but feel surprised. What kind of opportunities could there be in this wilderness? However, since the system had given him such a prompt, there must be a reason. He had no choice but to follow the navigation system and change the direction of his journey. After driving for about 10 minutes, he arrived at the bottom of a steep cliff. The cliff was at least a hundred meters tall. At this moment, below the cliff, a group of rock climbers were rubbing their fists. When his car stopped, he immediately attracted everyone's attention. After all, this supercar was too eye-catching. Yi Feng pushed open the door and got out of the car, walking toward them. Are you guys competing? One of the men who seemed to be the organizer of the event nodded. Yes, we're holding a rock climbing competition. What's the matter? Yi Feng looked up at the steep cliff. Count me in. The man sized him up. You've also practiced rock climbing? Yi Feng shook his head. No, but I can try. The man immediately shook his head and refused. That won't do. Rock climbing is a very dangerous extreme sport. If you haven't received any training, it's very dangerous. In case of an accident, we can't bear this responsibility. Yi Feng stretched his body. You don't have to take responsibility. If I fall, just send me to the hospital. His words made the other contestants laugh. Bro, you're climbing with the determination to die. Your spirit is commendable. I advise you not to be impulsive. Rock climbing is really dangerous. You should start from the basics. You're so young. If an accident happens to you, it won't be a joke. Yeah, we're all professionals. Why are you blindly joining in the fun? 
Hurry up and cool off to the side. Our competition is about to begin. Yi Feng glanced at them. Are you afraid of losing to an amateur player like me and feeling ashamed? His words immediately aroused public anger. How can you say that? Why are you so ungrateful? That's right. We're all doing this for your own good. Why are you still blaming us? Lu Dongbin really doesn't know how to treat a good person. Why are you persuading him? If he wants to climb, let him climb. Anyway, if he falls to his death, he can't blame us. The king of hell can't save this d asterisk Ned ghost. At this time, a fully armed man walked in front of Yi Feng. Kid, since you're not afraid of death, I'll count you in. However, if you can't get up or down halfway, you might pee your pants. When the other contestants heard this, they immediately burst into laughter. They looked at Yi Feng with an expression of watching a show. Yi Feng turned to look at the man. From what you're saying, you've peed your pants in fear before? As soon as he said this, the faces of the contestants changed. Brat, I'm afraid you still don't know who is standing in front of you? Zhang Chao, have you heard of him? He's a professional player who participated in the national rock climbing competition and won a bronze medal. And he's also a coach in many high-end climbing clubs. Would he be scared to the point of peeing his pants? The ignorant are truly fearless and dare to say anything. Yi Feng heard everyone's words and looked at that man again. So he's a professional player? Sorry for the disrespect, but it's a pity that it's a bronze medal. If it's a gold medal, I might want to get an autograph from you. Zhang Chao was hit on the soft spot and immediately went berserk. So what if it's a bronze medal? It's more than enough to kill a noob like you. Do you dare to compete with me? As long as you can stay within 10 meters of me, I will lose. I'll give you this bronze medal as a souvenir. Saying so, he took out a bronze medal from his pocket and waved it in front of Yi Feng. It could be seen that he cared a lot about this bronze medal and actually carried it with him. Yi Feng pursed his lips. Although I am not interested in your bronze medal, I accept your challenge. Zhang Chao nodded with a smile and turned to look at the organizer. Give him a set of protective gear. Don't let him really fall to his death. But Yi Feng directly rejected. There's no need for protective gear. It's a hindrance and will affect my speed. Zhang Chao was taken aback. You want to rock climb with your bare hands? I have to remind you that if you fall, you will either die or be crippled. Ye Feng simulate lightly. If I really fall, I will give you that sports car. Zhang Chao glanced at the Likin supercar and was immediately tempted. He even secretly hoped that this guy would really fall. At this moment, the organizer announced the start of the competition. A group of rock climbers gathered at the foot of the cliff. Only Yi Feng was still looking up from below, as if he was looking for a climbing route. The contestants couldn't help but laugh in their hearts. The competition has already started, and you're only looking for a climbing route now. Isn't it a little too late? In just a moment, the other players had already covered a distance of more than 10 meters. Only then did Yi Feng walk to the cliff unhurriedly, knocking on the mountain rocks as if he was feeling the hardness of the cliff. The organizers of the competition looked at each other and wanted to laugh. In their eyes, Yi Feng was obviously afraid. That was why he was dawdling. However, this was also good. If something happened to him climbing up, they would inevitably bear the responsibility. The person in charge stood up and walked to Yi Feng's side. Sir, do you want to go over there to rest first? Before he could finish, Yi Feng suddenly grabbed a bulge, exerted strength with both arms, and his body immediately rose up. Then, they saw a shocking scene. Yi Feng's speed was extremely fast. It was so fast that it was a little abnormal. He was like a gecko, walking on the cliff as if it was flat ground. He grabbed a bulge and exerted force, causing his body to rise up a large chunk. His arm strength was simply unimaginable. In just a few breaths, he had caught up to the players who had set off 10 seconds earlier. He, is he still human? A staff member couldn't help but exclaim. His words clearly spoke the thoughts of the others. I've never seen someone climb so fast. With this guy's speed, I'm afraid he can win the world championship, right? I think he just said that it's his first rock climbing. Bullsh asterisk T, how can a first-time rock climber be this good? Do you think that's possible? Too abnormal. He's about to surpass the other contestants. While they were talking, Yifeng had already surpassed a few rock climbers. 
The players only felt a black shadow pass by them, and they were all shocked. Two people had almost let go and fell from above. What the H asterisk LL is this? The few of them looked up and were instantly dumbfounded. What the H asterisk LL? Isn't this speed too fast? Is he rock climbing? Why do I feel like he's walking on flat ground? How did he do it? He's like Superman. I feel like he flew up and disappeared with a whoosh. Zhang Chao, who had always been in first place, lowered his head to take a look when he heard everyone's discussion. Then, he saw a black shadow rapidly approaching. What was this? Before he could react, Yi Feng had already brushed past him, leaving behind a devilish smile. Good luck. After saying that, he waved his arm and his body immediately soared into the sky. Zhang Chao felt a chill in his crotch and almost peed his pants. What kind of insane climbing technique was this? He was like a gibbon. It had completely broken through the limits of humanity. Everyone had already forgotten that they were competing. They looked at Yi Feng blankly. In a short while, he had already climbed to a height of more than 50 meters. Further up was a large protruding mountain. This kind of mountain was very troublesome and dangerous. If he couldn't hold on firmly, he might fall down. This was the limit of their competition and they did not plan to continue climbing. Yi Feng also encountered some difficulties. He stopped at the protruding mountain and started to observe. Brother, stop climbing up. You've already won. Yeah, it's too dangerous up there. This is already very impressive. You are the strongest rock climber I have ever seen. You deserve to be the champion. Brother, come down. We all admit defeat. But Yi Feng turned a deaf ear to everyone's words. He stared at the protruding mountain for a long time. He exerted force under his feet and flew up. Hiss. Everyone gasped. Was this guy crazy? If he missed and fell from a height of 100 meters, wouldn't he be turned into meat paste? This was simply playing with his life. Just when everyone was worried about Yi Feng's safety, he grabbed a protruding rock. His body kept swaying in the air. Everyone was so frightened that they even stopped breathing. F asterisk CK, this young man was too bold. Yi Feng only paused for a moment before continuing to climb. He soon reached the end of the cliff that was more than a hundred meters long. At this moment, someone suddenly exclaimed, Not good! There's a mountain eagle! Everyone looked up and saw a mountain eagle flapping its wings, pouncing toward Yi Feng. Be careful! Everyone panicked and shouted. In fact, even without their reminder, Yi Feng had already noticed the eagle that was charging toward him. However, he did not panic. He grabbed the rock wall with both hands and swung his body. The mountain eagle immediately missed. Hiss! The spectators below gasped. This was really too dangerous. If he was not careful, he might fall from a height of 100 meters and die without a doubt. That mountain eagle missed, it immediately changed direction in the air and continued to pounce toward Yi Feng. Yi Feng was a little angry. Was this not over? He grabbed the rock wall with one hand and pulled out a stone from the rock wall with the other hand before throwing it fiercely. Bang! Screech! The eagle let out a mournful cry as its body began to fall. When everyone below saw this, they were dumbfounded. He was in midair, yet he was able to make such a difficult move and successfully hit the mountain eagle? Wasn't this too fierce? They had thought that the crisis had been resolved, but they did not expect that when the eagle was halfway down, it suddenly flapped its wings and continued to pounce toward Yi Feng. This time, it was even faster, as if it was going to perish together. Yi Feng did not have the time to dig at the rock. He moved his body again and dodged the eagle's charge. However, the eagle's eyes were already red from killing. It missed its target and immediately turned back to continue its attack. Yi Feng's body swayed in the air. It looked like he was in danger. The people below had already stopped breathing. Everyone broke out in cold sweat. Right at this moment, the mountain eagle swooped down again and charged over. Yi Feng seized this opportunity and grabbed it with his right hand. He grabbed the eagle's neck with his hands and exerted force. With a crack, he broke its neck and threw it down from the sky. The people below who watched with a hanging heart finally had their heart fall to the ground. Everyone's hands and feet were numb, and they could not stand steadily. They all found a place to sit down. They then looked at Yi Feng's figure in a daze. 
The entire process of him dodging the eagle in the air and finally capturing and killing it was simply extremely dangerous. It was more exciting than watching any Hollywood blockbuster. The contestants also retreated. They felt their bodies go numb and broke out in cold sweat. Zhang Chao was even more miserable, yellow liquid continuously dripping down from his pants. He was really scared to pee? Yi Feng, who was still on the cliff, heaved a sigh of relief. At the same time, a doubt rose in his heart. Why did this eagle suddenly attack him like a madman? Could it be that its nest was up there? He continued to climb up with doubts and soon reached the top of the cliff. Then, his eyes widened. At the top of the cliff, there was a huge mushroom-like plant. This was Lingji. He had been studying medicine recently, so he recognized this plant immediately. However, most of the Lingji in his impression was palm-sized, or at most the size of a basketball. However, the Lingji in front of him was nearly one meter in diameter. Such a large Lingji must be at least 300 years old, right? Although he had seen too many peerless treasures, he still gasped. A 300-year-old Lingji? This was simply a rare treasure. No wonder the eagle wanted to fight him to the death. If it ate this Lingji, its lifespan would increase by at least 10 years, or even 20 years. After the exclamation, he immediately had a headache. Such a huge stock of Lingji, how was he going to get it down? He frowned and pondered for a moment. Then, he immediately took off his coat, tied his sleeves to the roots of the Lingji, and carried it on his back. It was a little heavy, at least 30 kilograms. Carrying such a heavy thing down the mountain was too dangerous. But thinking of the value of this Lingji mushroom and the generous reward that the system would give after the navigation was completed, Yi Feng decided to take the risk. When they saw him carrying a huge bundle of things and starting to climb down the cliff, the people below were stunned. What is he carrying on his back? It's too far away, so I can't see it clearly. But it looks like it's quite heavy. Is he crazy? It was already very difficult to come down. But he actually had to carry such a big thing? Yes, after the weight increases, the difficulty of going down the mountain will increase a lot. If you're not careful, you might fall. If you fall from a height of over a hundred meters, you'll probably turn into meat paste, right? Fortunately, everyone's worries were unnecessary. Yi Feng climbed down the mountain without any danger. Even though he was not as fast as when he went up, it was already very rare for him to come down smoothly. It was only when he landed that everyone's hearts finally settled. Then, they turned their gazes to the thing on the back of this master. What is this? It looks like a mushroom. This. This seems to be Lingji, right? But this is too exaggerated. How could there be such a huge Lingji? This seems to be Lingji. I've seen it in a Chinese medicine shop before. It's exactly the same as this, but it's not this big. Oh my god, such a big Lingji should be worth tens of thousands, right? At this moment, a staff member who recognized the goods stammered. Tens of thousands? This Lingji is at least a hundred years old, at least... Tens of millions? How? How much? Tens of millions? Everyone was stunned. I have a friend who is in the Chinese medicine business. He often tells me about Chinese medicine. I heard him say that a 10-year-old Lingji can be sold for hundreds of thousands. Every 10 years, the price will double. Saying so, he turned to look at Yi Feng's Lingji. The size of this Lingji is simply shocking. A conservative estimate was that it would be at least a hundred years old. The price would definitely be tens of millions or even higher. After hearing his explanation, everyone looked at Yi Feng and the Lingji in a daze. Did he pick this Lingji from the top of the mountain? Isn't his luck too heaven-defying? Are there any more? If there is one, I will climb up and get one. You're thinking too much. How can there be so many of such treasures? I can only say that he's lucky. It's not just good luck. It's simply heaven-defying. Tens of millions. Oh my god. So this is Lingji? Can one live forever after eating this thing? If you increase the number of times, you definitely can't achieve immortality, but I guess it has a great tonic effect, right? Everyone was amazed at Yi Feng's heaven-defying luck. He could pick up treasures worth tens of millions just by climbing a rock. What kind of luck was this? Yi Feng wanted to laugh in his heart. A hundred-year-old Lingji? His Lingji was at least three hundred years old. 
The price was hard to estimate. However, he couldn't be bothered to explain to these people. He immediately untied the lingji and placed it in the trunk. You don't have to be envious. I risked my life to climb up and almost died here. Everyone nodded. That's right. When that eagle pounced on you just now, I was almost scared to death. This brother is really too powerful. If it were me, I would probably fall down. Those few moves of yours were so cool. How did you do it? I've decided. You'll be my idol from now on. Idol, can you take a photo with me? Me too. I will remember what happened today for the rest of my life. I want to take photos too. Everyone had already treated Yi Feng as their idol. They were all fighting to take a photo with him. But Yi Feng rejected them all. He didn't want to become an idol. It was better to keep a low profile. At this moment, Zhang Chao walked over and handed over the bronze medal. You win. This bronze medal is yours. One could see the reluctance in his eyes. It could be seen that this bronze medal was very important to him. Yi Feng took the bronze medal and weighed it in his hand before throwing it back to him. You should keep it for yourself. If it's a gold medal, I will accept it, but I don't care about bronze medals. After saying that, he waved at everyone and drove away. At this moment, a system notification sounded in his ear. Congratulations to the host for completing the treasure hunt mission. One billion in cash. When Yi Feng heard the reward, his mood became even better. The system was getting more and more generous, directly rewarding ten small digits. However, before he could be happy for too long, he suddenly thought of his date with Lu Xiaoya. D asterisk him in it. I was so focused on picking Lingji that I almost forgot about this. Although he had already sped up to the maximum speed, he was still more than half an hour late. When he arrived at the farmhouse, he saw Lu Xiaoya sitting at the door waiting for him from afar. I'm really sorry. I encountered an accident on the way. As soon as he got out of the car, he immediately apologized profusely. Lu Xiaoya snorted. It's okay. You are now the respected Mr. Yi in Zhonghai. It's only right that you are late. Ye feng hurriedly simulet apologetical. This was really an accident. I sincerely apologize to you. It will not happen again. Lu Xiaoya's anger dissipated when she saw his sincere attitude. What happened to you? Are you hurt? Ye feng quickly waved his hand. I'm fine. I happened to see a rock climbing competition on the way, so I want to join in the fun. Lu Xiaoya's interest was piqued. You know how to rock climb? Why haven't I heard of it before? It's my first time too. Then you should have lost badly, right? You didn't pee your pants? Sorry to disappoint you. Not only did I not pee my pants, but I even climbed up to the top of the mountain. Stop bragging. You can climb a hundred meters on your first rock climb? You still don't believe me? Look, this is the spoils of war I found at the top of the mountain. Yi Feng said as he opened the trunk. When Lu Xiaoya saw the huge Lingji, she was stunned. This, such a huge Lingji? It must be more than a hundred years, right? This is simply a priceless treasure. Yi Feng immediately gave her a thumbs up. As expected of Tan Bohong's granddaughter, you have good eyesight. Lu Xiaoya was not happy at all after being praised by him. Why didn't you invite me along for such a fun thing? Yi Feng immediately rolled his eyes. Interesting. I almost fell to my death from a height of 100 meters. Lu Xiaoya suddenly became nervous. What exactly happened? Yi Feng immediately explained the matter of the mountain eagle's ambush. He described the dangerous scene vividly, as if he was there personally. Lu Xiaoya broke out in a cold sweat. Although Yi Feng was standing in front of her now, she still felt some fear. You. You're not allowed to participate in such activities in the future. This is too scary. Yi Feng saw her worried expression and felt touched. Don't worry, I'm fine, right? By the way, what are we having for lunch? Before Lu Xiaoya could answer, a middle-aged woman walked out of the small courtyard. Miss Lu, is this your boyfriend? Can we eat now? Lu Xiaoya's pretty face instantly turned red. Ani Wong, what nonsense are you talking about? He, he's not my boyfriend. However, Ani Wong looked at her as if she could see through everything. Auntie is experienced. When you were waiting for him at the door just now, you looked very much like a little wife. How could I be wrong? Lu Xiaoya hurriedly covered her pretty face. Ani Wong, I, I'm ignoring you. After saying that, 
she quickly entered the small courtyard. The decoration of this farmhouse was completely in accordance with the rural style. There was a brick bed in the room, and on it was a small square table filled with all kinds of home-cooked dishes. The taste was also very peasant. Yi Feng ate two mouthfuls and could not help but give a thumbs up. Xiaoya, this farmhouse you chose is really good. Lu Xiaoya sat opposite him and smiled proudly. Of course, I'm an expert in food. I know all the delicious food in Zhonghai. Yi Feng could not help but shake his head and smile. What a glutton. However, Lu Xiaoya did not mind. Her small mouth made a sound of pada pada as she ate happily. Yi Feng ate another two mouthfuls and slowly put down his chopsticks. Tell me, why do you suddenly want to treat me to a meal? Lu Xiaoya puffed up her cheeks. Because my grandfather and father praised you and said that you're very powerful now. I have to quickly suck up to you, or else I won't be able to line up in the future. Yi Feng was a little surprised. Your grandfather and father praised me? How? Lu Xiaoya pursed her lips. They said that you were in Zhonghai now, and you can do anything you want. Yesterday, a big boss from Yangcheng knelt in front of your door for more than two hours, but he didn't even get to see you. Yi Feng was a little proud. There should not be many young people who can be praised by Elder Tan and your father, right? Lu Xiaoya glared at him. What are you showing off for? I don't see how powerful you are either. Yi Feng's lips curled up into a smirk. You can't see my strong points. Seeing his expression, how could Lu Xiaoya not know what he was referring to? Her pretty face instantly turned red. You, can't you be more serious when talking to a girl? Yi Feng looked at her innocently. I'm talking about talent. What do you think it is? Lu Xiaoya's pretty face turned even redder. I'm also talking about talent. What else could it be? Yi Feng stared at her. Also, Lu Xiaoya's heart pounded wildly under his gaze. In her panic, she knocked over the soup bowl beside her. Ah, it hurts. She immediately cried out in pain. Yi Feng was also shocked. He quickly took out a few tissues to wipe her thighs. Fortunately, the bowl of soup had been left to dry for a long time, so the temperature was not particularly high. Why are you so careless? You're really stupid, Yi Feng scolded while wiping. Lu Xiaoya's eyes were red and she was about to cry. Isn't it all your fault? Who asked you to tease me? Be gentle, it hurts. Yi Feng hurriedly reminded her. Can you lower your voice? If others hear you, they might think that I did something to you. Lu Xiaoya pouted. What can you do to me? Do you have the guts? Yi Feng raised his head and saw that she was looking at him provocatively. She had specially dressed up today. Her face was painted with exquisite makeup and she was even more beautiful. She had already taken off her coat and was only wearing a white tank top. Her slim waist clenched into a fist. She was wearing a pink short skirt and her legs were fair and slender. She wasn't wearing any socks and her two fair and tender little feet were very alluring. Moreover, the two of them were sitting on the brick bed at this time, so it was easier for them to make some connections. Ye thanks biretin kuiken it. The hand that was originally wiping her started to slowly caress her like he was caressing a piece of jade. Lu Xiaoya also noticed his strange behavior and was a little nervous. Give. Give me a tissue. I'll wipe it myself. As she spoke, she reached out to grab a tissue. But Yi Feng grabbed her wrist. Ye Feng. What are you doing? You're hurting me. Let go. The more she resisted, the more Yi Feng wanted to conquer her. In the end, he completely lost his rationality and pushed her onto the brick bed. Lu Xiaoya was really panicking this time. Yi Feng, let go of me. I want to go home. Before she could finish, her lips were already sealed by Yi Feng. Her hands were also pressed on top of her head. Wu Wu. Lu Xiaoya struggled a few more times, but her weak strength was not worth mentioning in front of him. Gradually, she gave up resisting. Actually, from the bottom of her heart, she did not dislike Yi Feng. She even liked him a little. Especially yesterday, her grandfather and father had been trying to matchmake her and Yi Feng. This was like piercing through a layer of window paper. It made the love that she had been hiding in her heart burst out. That was why she called Yi Feng impulsively. In fact, she had already broken through her psychological barrier. The only thing she was nervous about now was the panic and shame she felt for the first time. 
It was too embarrassing for her to be honest with a man of the opposite sex. Yi Feng obtained her tacit approval, and he became even more unrestrained. They were preparing for a large-scale invasion. At this moment, Ani Wong suddenly pushed the door open and entered. I've just made a little pheasant stewed with mushrooms. Try it. Halfway through her sentence, she was stunned on the spot. Yi Feng and Lu Xiaoya separated in a fluster. It was extremely awkward. I, I didn't see anything. You guys continue. Ani Wong ran out in a panic and kept muttering. You still say that you're not a boyfriend and girlfriend? I told you I wouldn't be mistaken. Yi Feng looked at Lu Xiaoya awkwardly. I'm sorry, Yi Yust. Lu Xiaoya glared at him. Big bad guy, big blockhead, stinky hooligan. While cursing, she quickly got off the brick bed and fled. Actually, she wasn't angry. She just felt ashamed. She just wanted to get out of here. Yi Feng looked at her back and took a deep breath. How could he do such a beastly thing? What was even more infuriating was, he actually didn't succeed. He was simply worse than a beast. Lu Xiaoya had already driven away. Yi Feng could only get into the car and drive back slowly. Other than how to get Lu Xiaoya's forgiveness, he was also having a headache about something else. That was the preservation of the Lingji. Although his medical skills were already very good, his knowledge of medicinal herbs was still very lacking. If such a precious medicinal herb was not preserved well, resulting in its medicinal effects being greatly reduced, then it would really be a waste of natural resources. Just as he was frowning and thinking, he suddenly received a call from Su Jing Xin. If you have time now, you can come to my place. What's the matter? Didn't you ask me to help you find out about the auction of Nyosiden's assets? Now, there are already some clues. All right, I'll be there immediately. Yi Feng hung up the phone and headed towards Su Jing Xin's house. When he stepped into the Su family's door with the Lingji in his arms, Su Jing Xin, who was drinking tea in the pavilion in the courtyard, was stunned. Is this a Lingji? Where did you get it? She was well informed and naturally recognized that this was a Lingji. However, this was the first time she had seen such a large Lingji. I picked it from the mountain. Don't ask anymore. Lend me your refrigerator for a while. I'll freeze it first. Don't spoil it, Yi Feng said as he walked toward the living room. Wait a minute, do you understand? How can this thing be placed in the fridge? Su Jing Xin hurriedly stopped him. If you don't put it in the fridge, where should I put it? Yi Feng stopped and looked at her in confusion. Ling Ji needs to be air dried or dried at a low temperature. The moisture content should be controlled below 13%. Then, it should be sealed in a bag and stored in a cool and dry place. Su Jing Xin immediately explained to him. Yi Feng immediately put down the Ling Ji and started to do nothing. However, he couldn't help but admire her in his heart. This woman really knew a lot. Su Jing Xin was speechless. She was just reminding him out of kindness, but she did not expect to take on a job. You haven't told me where you got this Lingji. Such a large Lingji should be at least a few hundred years old, right? Yi Feng immediately told her the process of obtaining the Lingji. Of course, he did not mention the system notification. Su Jing Xin was speechless for a long time. Sometimes, I really admire you. How can your luck be so good? He could pick up a hundred-year-old Lingji just by climbing a mountain? Yi Feng shrugged. I have no choice, but my luck is like a fly. I can't chase it away. Su Jing Xin did not want to talk to him anymore. If it weren't for her good attitude, she would have been defeated by him long ago. The two of them sat in the pavilion and drank some tea. Su Jing Xin opened his mouth again. I heard that you have offended Wei Changfeng of Yangcheng recently? Do you want me to help you inform them? At least he won't dare to make things difficult for you. Yi Feng immediately waved his hand. There's no need for that for now. I can handle it. As he spoke, he looked up at her. You seem to be quite concerned about me. You even heard about it? Su Ying Xin Balushet? Who cares about you? I. I heard it from Uncle Lu. At this moment, Lu Wan Yuan, who was making wooden dummies in the backyard, couldn't help sneezing twice. Aya, the weather is getting a little cold. Looks like I have to wear two more layers of clothes. Yi Feng put down his teacup and looked at Su Jing Xin. You said on the phone that Nyo Sidon's assets are going to be auctioned off? When? Su Jing Xin put down her teacup and answered seriously, probably within a week. 
but this auction is limited to a small circle, and the capital requirements are very high. How high? 1 billion, liquid funds. That's good. It's not much. Su Jingxin was speechless again. This guy's words were simply too much. Wasn't 1 billion yuan a lot? Many people with a net worth of tens of billions might not even have so much liquid capital, okay? If this wasn't enough, then how much was enough? As far as I know, there are many people eyeing this auction covetously. You'd better go to Yangcheng in advance to set up a trap. I understand. I'll leave tomorrow. Then I wish you success. Don't worry. I'm determined to win this auction. Yi Feng was exuding confidence. Su Jingxin stared at him, lost in thought for a moment. However, she quickly reacted and quickly averted her gaze. Yi Feng chatted with her for a while, more before he stood up and left. Then I'll leave this Lingji to you? Don't. I only know some theoretical knowledge. If I break it, I can't afford to pay for it. I'll introduce you to an expert. You can go straight to him, Su Jingxin hurriedly refused. Yi Feng was helpless. He could only carry the Lingji and leave. Su Jingxin introduced him to a Chinese medicine store called the Imperial Medicine Store. As soon as he walked into the shop, he smelled a strong medicinal fragrance. Sir, you? A young man in a white coat was about to greet him when he suddenly saw the giant Lingji in his arms. His eyes widened as if he had seen a ghost. This, this is a Lingji? Yi Feng immediately rolled his eyes. Nonsense. Do you think it's a mushroom? The man hurriedly waved his hand. That's not what I meant. It's just that this is the first time I've seen such a big Lingji. Yi Feng could not be bothered to talk nonsense with him. I am looking for Dr. Shun Yulong. Is he in the shop now? The man finally came back to his senses. You're looking for my master? Yes, yes, yes. Wait a moment. As he spoke, he quickly walked into the room. A moment later, a white-bearded old man rushed out barefooted. Where is the hundred-year-old Lingji? Quickly let me see. With that, he rushed to the Lingji. It was as if he had seen a peerless beauty and wanted to touch her but did not dare to. This, is this really a Lingji? Judging from its size and color, it's at least 300 years old. Good fortune, good fortune. At this moment, there were many customers in the Imperial Medicine Store. Upon hearing Shan Yulong's words, they looked over in shock. A 300-year-old Lingji? Oh my god, how is this possible? Let alone 300 years old, even a 10-year-old Lingji is frighteningly expensive. Yeah, 300-year-old Lingji, how much is that? This kid is going to be rich. This level of precious medicinal herbs cannot be measured with money. Shen Yulong heard the whispers of the crowd and came back to his senses. He hurriedly looked up at Yi Feng. Little brother, are you selling your Lingji? I have an old friend in Yangcheng who is currently harvesting Lingji. The older it is, the better. This 300-year-old Lingji of yours can definitely be sold for a good price. Yi Feng immediately shook his head and rejected. I'm not selling it. Shin Yulong was still unwilling to give up. I can make my own decision. I'll give you a price first. 300 million. As soon as he said this, the customers in the shop were shocked. Oh my god, such a Lingji can actually be sold for 300 million? I originally thought that it would be at most tens of millions. I didn't expect it to be 300 million. This young man is only in his 20s, but he can earn 300 million? He's really young and promising. Young man, what are you hesitating for? Hurry up and agree. Yes, if you sell this Lingji, you won't have to worry about money for the rest of your life. Before Yi Feng could speak, they started to get anxious. But Yi Feng was still unmoved. I have already said, I am not selling. Everyone was even more dumbfounded. Isn't this kid too stubborn? 300 million, and he still didn't sell it? Does he know what 300 million means? If it were me, I would sell it for 30 million, let alone 300 million. No matter how good this medicinal herb is, what's the use of keeping it in your hands? It's better to exchange it for some money. Maybe he's rich? He doesn't care about 300 million at all. Everyone criticized Yi Feng's stupid decision. Yi Feng was disdainful of these people's words. When he completed the treasure hunting mission today, the system rewarded him with 1 billion yuan. A mere 300 million was nothing to him. Moreover, 
If this 300-year-old Lingji was placed in the hands of others, it might not be able to display its greatest effect. It was better to exchange it for some money. However, for him, who had mastered the powerful medical skills, the effect of this Lingji was simply immeasurable. How could it be measured by a mere 300 million? Shin Yulong wanted to persuade him again. Yi Feng was already a little impatient. I came here today to ask you to help me preserve this Lingji, not to sell it. If you keep nagging, I'll find someone else. Shin Yulong hurriedly stopped him. I'm sorry. I spoke too much. I don't trust anyone else to handle it, so I'll handle it for you personally. After saying that, he brought Yi Feng into a room. The room was filled with all sorts of herbs. Other than that, there were also a lot of machines that were running, such as drying, grinding, boiling, sealing, and so on. Shin Yulong asked someone to clean the Lingji first. Then, he began to slice the Lingji, dry it, and seal it. The entire process took more than two hours. By the time all the procedures were completed, it was already past four in the afternoon. Thank you. How much is the total salary? Yi Feng thanked him and prepared to pay. I don't need wages, but can you give me a little Lingji? Not much, just a small piece. Shin Yulong nervously looked at Yi Feng's face. Sure. Yi Feng picked up a piece of Lingji the size of a poplar leaf and handed it over. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Shin Yulong held the piece of Lingji in his palm as if he had obtained a precious treasure. He then asked his subordinates to move the sealed Lingji into Yi Feng's car. Yi Feng did not say anything else. He directly drove back to Zhongtian Lakeview Villa. He was leaving for Yangcheng tomorrow, so he packed some luggage. Then, he called Chen Xian. Sister Xian, I'm going to Yangcheng in the next few days. If you come back to stay, remember to lock the door. You're also coming to Yangcheng? Chen Xian's surprised voice immediately came from the other end. What do you mean by also coming? From what you're saying, you're also in Yangcheng now. That's right. Those suppliers had previously broken their contracts. Now that we've discussed the cooperation with a new supplier, there are many contracts that have to be signed again. That's good too. Then let's meet in Yangcheng. Sure, I'll wait for you. After hanging up the phone, Yi Feng booked a ticket for the high speed rail from the internet. He didn't want to be too ostentatious when he went to Yangcheng this time. He just wanted to keep a low profile. After all, that was Nyo Sidon's sphere of influence. Although Nyo Sidon was dead, his influence had not completely disappeared. It was better to keep a low profile. Just as he was packing his luggage, the TV suddenly started to broadcast the news. According to the media, Xiaqiu's, like a dream crew, is about to wrap up filming. They're currently filming the last crucial scene in Yangcheng. Yi Feng was stunned. He immediately turned around. On the news screen, a video of Xia Qiu filming appeared. He didn't expect her to be in Yangcheng. Should he find some time to visit? Firstly, they were good friends. Secondly, he was the major shareholder of Nanfeng Entertainment, so he could be considered her boss. It was reasonable for him to go. However, after thinking about it, he decided not to. After all, she was a public figure, and it was not convenient for her to interact with the opposite sex. Otherwise, if the paparazzi took a photo of it and made a headline of meeting an outsider boyfriend in private, it would not have a good impact on her. He had to keep a low profile on this trip. He tried his best not to stir up any trouble. Of course, if they had to find him, he would not be merciful. The next morning, Yi Feng rushed to the high-speed rail station. He dragged his suitcase and found his seat. However, he realized that there was already a girl sitting in his seat. The girl was wearing a baseball cap and a pair of large aviators on the bridge of her nose, covering her entire face. Her long, fair legs were resting on the seat in front of her. At this moment, she was playing Mobile Legends with her head lowered. Beauty, this seat seems to be mine, right? He reminded out of goodwill. The girl only replied with a him, but she had no intention of moving. Ye thank fronet. Can't you move? Wait for me to finish this round, the girl replied vaguely. Yi Feng was helpless. He could only wait at the side. This girl's technique was too weak, and she was killed many times. But what was rare was that she had a good mentality. She didn't say a word or curse. This round, without any surprises, they lost. Yi Feng felt that she should give up his seat now. However, the girl seemed to have forgotten about it. 
She put on her headphones and listened to the music. He was really angry now. You did it on purpose, didn't you? I already told you. This is my seat. As his voice was too loud, it attracted the attention of many people in the carriage. The girl pointed to the seat by the window. You can sit inside. If she had said this before, Yi Feng might have agreed. I only want my position. Now, get out of my way. The girl did not seem to hear him. She crossed her legs and swayed her little feet, humming a tune. Her attitude was as if he was saying, If I don't let you, what can you do to me? Yi Feng could not hold it in anymore. He took off her earphones with one hand and her sunglasses with the other. I say, why are you? Before he could finish, the girl had already raised her head. What did I do? Continue. Yi Feng looked at her blankly. Why is it you? This unreasonable girl was actually Lu Xiaoya. Lu Xiaoya smiled. Why can't it be me? Yi Feng was a little confused. You want to go to Yangcheng too? Lu Xiaoya nodded. That's right. Can't I? Why are you going to Yangcheng? I can't I go and play? That's not it. I just feel a little. Isn't this too much of a coincidence? Then we can only say that we are fated. Lu Xiaoya's lips curled into a sly smile. She heard from her grandfather last night that Nyo Sidon's assets were about to be auctioned off. Yi Feng might go to Yang Chung to participate in the auction. At that time, she was careful and used her grandfather's connections to check Yi Feng's schedule. She knew that he had booked a high-speed train to Yang Chung. Therefore, she had specially reserved a seat next to him. Yi Feng did not think too much and sat down beside her. How can your grandfather and the others be at ease if you go to Yangcheng alone? Lu Xiaoya pouted. What's there to worry about? Are you afraid that I'll be kidnapped? Ye think not that seriously. That's not impossible. There are many bad people in this society. Lu Xiaoya turned around and glanced at him. Is there anyone worse than you? Yi Feng knew that she was talking about yesterday's farmhouse. He looked out of the window awkwardly. Lu Xiaoya smiled smugly. This matter could be said to be a big embarrassment for this guy. In the future, she could often bring it out to mock him. It was a good thing that Mr. Yi, who was feared by everyone in Zhonghai, was defeated. Just as she was feeling smug, she suddenly noticed that there was a man across the aisle who kept staring at her legs. Even though she had already used her eyes to show her power, the man still looked at her fearlessly. She couldn't take it anymore and asked directly, What are you looking at? Haven't you seen a woman's legs before? The man glared at her. My eyes are grown by me. I can look whenever I want to. What do you have to do with that? Besides, aren't you showing it for others to see? If you don't want people to see you, wear long pants. Lu Xiaoya was furious, but there was nothing she could do when faced with such a scoundrel. Yi Feng looked at her gloatingly. Weren't you quite powerful when you were scolding me? If you encounter a real scoundrel, there's nothing you can do, right? As long as you beg me, I can help you teach him a lesson. Lu Xiaoya glared at him. You want to be a hero and save the damsel in distress? I won't give you the chance. Do you believe that someone will teach him a lesson for me without me saying anything? Her words were soon verified. A man in a black singlet with a green dragon tattoo on his arm stood up and walked over. Beauty, do you need help? Lu Xiaoya raised her eyebrows at Yi Feng. Her smugness was self-evident. All right, then help me beat him up. As she spoke, she pointed at the wretched man from earlier. The tattooed man looked back at the man. No problem. If I beat him up, you can add me as a friend on WeChat. That's not too much, right? Lu Xiaoya did not comment. It depends on your performance. The tattooed man did not say anything else. He grabbed the wretched man by the collar and punched him in the eye. The wretched man was not to be outdone and immediately counterattacked. The two of them fought in the aisle. Lu Xiaoya wanted the world to be in chaos and even fan the flames. Use more strength. Is this all a man can do? The tattooed man was provoked by her words and attacked even more fiercely. Soon, the wretched man was beaten until his head bled. His eyes were swollen and there was blood at the corner of his mouth. Stop fighting. Stop fighting. I admit defeat. The wretched man finally couldn't take it anymore and was the first to lose. Then, he turned to Lu Xiaoya and apologized respectfully. I'm sorry. I was wrong. I don't dare to look at it anymore. Lu Xiaoya looked at Yi Feng smugly. Look, even without you, 
I can still solve the problem easily. Yi Feng pursed his lips and did not say anything. At this moment, the tattooed man limped over. Beauty, can we add each other as friends now? Lu Xiaoya immediately pretended to be confused. Add me as a friend? The tattooed man's expression turned ugly when he saw that she was pretending to be confused. You just said that as long as I beat him up, you would add me as a friend. Lu Xiaoya blinked. Did I say that? I think I said it depends on your performance. The tattooed man was a little angry. I've already beaten him up to this extent, and I'm still not performing well? Lu Xiaoya pointed at his face. But you're also in this state. Aren't you too weak? I won't add such a noob as a friend on WeChat. The people in the carriage all found it funny. This should be the outcome of bootlicking, right? In the end, he had nothing. The man was completely furious. Are you F asterisk king kidding me? Lu Xiaoya curled her lips. It was you who wanted to be a bootlicker. I didn't ask you anyway. Stinky be asterisk to you. The man instantly went berserk and slapped her. Ah. Lu Xiaoya didn't expect that the other party would suddenly attack her. She hurriedly covered her face. At this moment, a hand suddenly reached out from the side. He grabbed the man's wrist. The tattooed man felt as if his wrist was stuck by a steel hoop and could not move at all. He immediately glared at Yifeng. Brat, I advise you to mind your own business. Let go. Yifeng used his hidden force and pushed the man back three to four steps. He crashed into the opposite seat. Hit a woman? Isn't it embarrassing? Be asterisk starred. You? The man stood up and continued to rush forward. At this time, he met Yi Feng's cold gaze. It was as if he was being stared at by a wild beast. He was so frightened that he did not dare to take another half step forward. However, in public, it would be too embarrassing if he was frightened by the other party's gaze. He immediately said harshly, All right, you're a busybody, right? Just you wait. When we get off the car, I'll kill you. After saying that, he returned to his seat. Lu Xiaoya was so scared that her face turned pale. She quickly grabbed Yi Feng's hand. Yi Feng, what should we do now? Yi Feng did not mind. What else can we do? It's cold. Lu Xiaoya's heart was filled with self blame. I'm sorry. It's all my fault. I shouldn't have provoked such a person. Yi Feng held back his laughter. We have already provoked him. What's the point of saying this? Lu Xiaoya's face was filled with panic. What should we do now? This person is obviously a local ruffian. We're not familiar with the people and places in Yangcheng. If he finds trouble with us, Yi Feng looked at her seriously. How about this? After we get out of the car, you hold on to his leg with all your might. I will run away first and find someone to help. Lu Xiaoya nodded seriously. All right, I'll definitely stall him. You must run faster. Yi Feng was amused. You really think I'm a scumbag? Letting a woman take the bullet while I escape? I'm not that shameless. Don't worry, it'll be fine. Although Lu Xiaoya heard what he said, she was still a little nervous. Her little head quickly thought of a solution. Zhonghai was very close to Yangcheng. It only took them more than an hour to reach the station. The tattooed man stood up and grinned at the two of them. I'll wait for you outside. If you have the guts, come out with me. With that, he turned around and got out of the car. Yi Feng, why don't we call the police? Lu Xiaoya looked at Yi Feng in panic. There's no need for it for the time being. Yi Feng took off their luggage and followed the crowd out of the car. When the two of them walked to the exit, they saw the tattooed man and a few others guarding the exit from afar. Those people were all carrying sticks in their hands, and they looked murderous. The passengers who exited the station all avoided them as they did not want to provoke such hooligans. Lu Xiaoya was even more nervous now. Her palms were sweating, and she grabbed Yi Feng's hands tightly and refused to let go. The tattooed man grabbed a baseball bat and kept slapping it in his hand a sinister smile on his face. It was as if he was staring at two prey. At this moment, two men in black suddenly rushed out from behind and pushed the hooligans to the sides. The tattooed man immediately turned around angrily. However, he immediately cowered. A middle-aged man got out of a Bentley. Then, under the protection of a group of bodyguards in black, he walked over quickly. The middle-aged man had an imposing appearance. His every move revealed the aura of a big shot. 
The passengers who left the station all moved to the sides and watched in shock from afar. What were these people doing? Wasn't this lineup too scary? Could it be that they were here to welcome some important person? The tattooed man and his subordinates also retreated. This kind of person was not someone hooligans like them could provoke. At the same time, he glared at Yifong. Brat, you're lucky. I'll deal with you after this big shot leaves. However, just as this thought rose in his mind, he saw an unbelievable scene. That big shot with an extraordinary aura quickly walked toward Yifong. Brother Yi, aren't you being too mean? Why didn't you tell me you were coming to Yangcheng? This person was none other than Luo Jingyuan. Yifeng looked at him and was a little surprised. How did you know that I came to Yangcheng? Luo Jingyuan put his hand on his shoulder. I saw President Chen at a cocktail party last night. She mentioned it by accident. Aren't you treating me as an outsider? You don't treat me as your brother? Yifeng could not help but smile bitterly. I came to Yangcheng this time to keep a low profile. Who knew that you would cause such a huge commotion? How can you, Mr. Yi, come to Yangcheng without a sound? I want to let those be asterisk stars know that Mr. Yi from Zhonghai is here, Luo Jingyuan said loudly. Then, he noticed that there was a beautiful girl standing beside him. Moreover, she was currently holding Yi Feng's hand. Brother Yi, this is... Only then did Yi Feng react. He hurriedly let go of Lu Xiaoya's hand. She, it's my friend, Lu Xiaoya. Luo Jingyuan had a strange smile on his face. What kind of friend? Yi Feng hit his shoulder. What are you thinking? We're just ordinary friends. Luo Jingyuan gave a smile that any man would understand. I understand. Who doesn't have a few friends when they're young? Lu Xiaoya stared at Luo Jingyuan blankly. Judging from the way this person appeared and the powerful aura he emitted, he should not be a simple person. She thought that Yi Feng's influence was limited to Zhong Hai. She did not expect him to know such a person in Yangcheng. This fellow really had a wide network of friends. Luo Jingyuan sized up Lu Xiaoya. Miss Lu, are you not feeling well? You don't look too good. Yi Feng shook his head and explained for her. It's nothing. She was just a little frightened. Luo Jingyuan heard this and immediately took it seriously. What's going on? Yi Feng nodded at those hooligans. Just now in the car, we had a small conflict with him. He threatened to cause us trouble. Luo Jingyuan looked in the direction he was pointing at. The smile on his face immediately disappeared and was replaced by a strong killing intent. Those hooligans were already scared out of their wits. At this moment, being stared at by this big shot with such a gaze, they were so scared that their entire body trembled. Wrong. Misunderstanding. This is all a misunderstanding. The tattooed man explained with a sad face. Luo Jingyuan snorted coldly. You blind dog. How dare you offend my brother. Today is your unlucky day. After saying that, he gave the bodyguards behind him a look. The bodyguards immediately rushed forward and dragged the hooligans away. Help. Kidnapping. Murder. Help me call the police. The hooligans immediately cried for their parents. But in the end, they were still pushed into the commercial car and taken away. As for what would happen to them, no one knew. The surrounding crowd was so frightened that they did not even dare to breathe loudly. Besides, they didn't know those hooligans. Who would offend such a person for them? Wouldn't they be tired of living? Luo Jingyuan did not take this matter to heart. To him, dealing with a few hooligans was like swatting a few flies. He then turned to look at Yifeng and the other woman. I have already booked the hotel for you. I will send you there now. Yi Feng did not say anything else. He directly followed the Bentley. Lu Xiaoya followed closely beside him, her heart pounding. Who was this middle-aged man? He actually dared to take those people away in public. With this kind of style of doing things, one could tell at a glance that he was a ruthless character. How did Yi Feng get to know such a person? Moreover, the relationship between the two of them was not ordinary. They were like biological brothers. This was too unbelievable. The three of them got into the Bentley, and the bodyguards also got into the two Mercedes-Benz cars behind them. Then, under the shocked gazes of everyone at the station, they left. Only then did everyone dare to discuss in a low voice. Who were those people just now? Isn't this too arrogant? He must be a big shot. Just his aura is even bigger than our boss boss. Yeah, that aura was too scary. 
I almost peed my pants just now. I think that young man is really amazing. He's so young. But he can actually call such a person his brother. I also have a faint feeling that the middle-aged man is trying to curry favor with him. I think so too. This young man probably has a bigger background. Maybe he's the crown prince of some super family? I've finally opened my eyes today. I'm actually able to see such a big shot. Aya, they were sitting in front of me on the high-speed rail just now. If I had known earlier, I would have gotten to know them. You? Do you really want to get to know this kind of person? Are you worthy? I? All right, I admit that I'm not worthy. Luo Jingyuan had booked a super five-star hotel called Kelsa, and it was the most luxurious presidential suite. When Yifeng and Lu Xiaoya walked into the room, they were shocked by the luxury inside. All the furniture was custom-made, and the style was very harmonious. It was obvious that it was the work of a great designer. Moreover, the view of the house was extremely wide. Looking out from the huge French windows, one could directly overlook the whole picture of Yang Cheng. This kind of room isn't cheap for a night, right? Yi Feng retracted his gaze from the scenery outside and turned to look at Luo Jingyuan. Luo Jingyuan immediately patted his chest and said arrogantly, Us brothers talking about money hurts our relationship. You can stay here as long as you want. You don't have to worry about the price. You misunderstood. What I meant was, can we book another room according to this standard? Pfft. Luo Jingyuan almost spat out a mouthful of blood. I thought you were embarrassed and wanted to pay me for the room. I didn't expect you to ask for so much. Yi Feng immediately smiled. You said it just now, we are brothers. Talking about money hurts our relationship. Luo Jingyuan laughed dryly. But talking about relationships hurts money. Isn't a presidential suite enough for you? Yi Feng turned to Lu Xiaoya beside him. We are a man and a woman. How are we going to live here? Luo Jingyuan glared at him unhappily. Why are you trying to play pure friendship with me? Don't tell me that you two are just ordinary friends. Yi Feng immediately rolled his eyes. But we are really normal friends. Luo Jingyuan winked at him. Isn't this a good opportunity for you to turn your ordinary friends into extraordinary ones? Yi Feng wanted to continue. He immediately interrupted. And I've already asked around in advance. This is the only room left in this hotel. What about the ordinary suites? It's also full. Are you kidding me? Why would I lie to you? If you don't believe me, you can ask at the front desk. Yi Feng was completely speechless. He glanced at Lu Xiaoya. Looks like we can only make do. Luckily, this suite has a few bedrooms. Lu Xiaoya's face had already turned red, and she only replied with a soft, hum. Luo Jingyuan immediately whispered into Yi Feng's ear, remember to take safety precautions. After saying that, he did not give him a chance to explain. You guys settle down first. I'll wait for you downstairs. I'll give you a welcome party later. Then, he turned around and walked out. After Luo Jingyuan left, Yi Feng looked at Lu Xiaoya awkwardly. Brother Luo likes to joke, don't take it to heart. Lu Xiaoya shook her head. No, I think he's quite interesting. Seeing that she did not take it to heart, Yi Feng was relieved. Do you want to take a shower and change your clothes first? Let's go eat later. Yes, all right. Lu Xiaoya took her luggage to a bedroom, then found the clothes she wanted to change into, and went straight to the bathroom. Yi Feng was sitting on the sofa in the living room, preparing to play with his phone for a while. However, when he glanced in the direction of the bathroom, his eyes were immediately fixed. The bathroom was made of tempered glass. Below the calf and above the neck, it was completely transparent glass. The middle part was mosaic. Although it was not very clear, it vaguely increased the temptation. Yi Feng was completely dumbfounded. Who designed this bathroom? Wasn't this too perverted? However, he had misunderstood the designer. After all, most of the people who could stay in the same room were couples. Not only was there no problem with this design, but it also added a lot of fun. Lu Xiaoya's every movement could be seen through the mosaic glass patterns. Although Yi Feng knew that it was shameless to watch like this, and he also wanted to look away, however, his eyes did not listen to him. It was only when Lu Xiaoya walked out of the bathroom that he started playing with his phone. Do you want a shower? Lu Xiaoya rubbed her hair with a towel and looked at him. I, I won't shower. Yi Feng hurriedly shook his head and rejected. 
After sitting in the car for so long, it's so dirty. Hurry up and wash up, Lu Xiaoya continued to urge him. No need. I'll just go change my clothes. Yi Feng stood up guiltily and rushed into the bedroom. Lu Xiaoya looked at him in confusion. What was this guy doing? At this moment, she accidentally looked in the direction of the bathroom and her mouth fell open. How could she see the inside of the bathroom from the outside? When she went in just now, she had clearly confirmed repeatedly that she could not see the outside from inside. Didn't that mean? She finally understood why Yi Feng had such a reaction. It turned out that the way she showered just now was directly broadcasted live. After thinking about this, she wished she could find a place to hide. How could she face others in the future? When Yi Feng walked out of the bedroom, he saw Lu Xiaoya staring at him coldly. Ahim, are you done packing? Brother Luo is still waiting for us. Let's go. He coughed guiltily and was about to walk out. Don't you want to explain? Lu Xiaoya questioned angrily. Explain what? Yi Feng pretended not to understand. Then what's going on with the bathroom? Why can you see inside from the outside? Lu Xiaoya glared at him angrily. You're asking me, how would I know? You should ask the designer. Yi Feng had no choice but to act shamelessly. You, what did you see just now? Tell the truth? What do you think? To be honest, I didn't see anything. Nonsense. I really didn't see anything. The front and back of you look similar. Be asterisk starred. Lu Xiaoya immediately went berserk and rushed up to fight him to the death. This be asterisk starred got a bargain and pretended to be good. He actually dared to mock her with his words. What did he mean by the front and the back were the same? Was it that small? Yi Feng dodged while persuading her nicely. I really did not look at it on purpose. It was all arranged by fate. If you feel that you are at a disadvantage, I can go in and bathe, and you can watch from outside. Who wants to see you, you big bad guy? Lu Xiaoya continued to chase after him. Yi Feng saw that the situation was not good. He opened the door and escaped. Lu Xiaoya chased him out of the room. Luo Jingyuan was waiting in the lobby on the first floor when he saw Yi Feng rushing out in a panic. Brother Yi, what's wrong with you? There's a tigress chasing me, Yi Feng said as he hid behind him. Tigress? Why is there a tiger in the hotel? Luo Jingyuan had yet to react. At this moment, Lu Xiaoya walked out of the elevator. She was wearing a white dress, and her long hair fluttered in the wind, making her look like a fairy. It was impossible to tell how crazy she was in the room. Luo Jingyuan turned around and looked at Yi Feng. Brother Yi, is this the tigress you were talking about? Lu Xiaoya smiled sweetly and looked at Yi Feng. What tigress? Yi Feng shook his head hurriedly. No. It's nothing. I was just joking with Brother Luo. Lu Xiaoya immediately walked over and held his arm. So you're joking? I thought you said I was a tigress. As she spoke, her other hand reached under his armpit and pinched him hard. Yi Feng grimaced in pain. Luo Jingyuan looked at Lu Xiaoya with admiration. Miss Lu, you look educated, gentle, and considerate. How can you be a tigress? How could there be such a gentle and cute tigress? Gentle and cute? Yi Feng's smile was uglier than crying. Do you have some misunderstanding about being gentle and cute? Lu Xiaoya tightened her grip. Is brother Luo wrong? Am I not gentle and cute? Under her coercion, Yi Feng could only nod his head against his will. Gyu, shock you. Lu Xiaoya finally let him go. She turned to Luo Jingyuan and said, Brother Luo, let's go eat. I'm a little hungry. Luo Jingyuan hurriedly nodded. Okay, okay, okay. We'll set off now. As he spoke, he looked at Yi Feng with envy. Brother Yi, such a good girl. You have to cherish her. Yi Feng could not help but roll his eyes. He really wanted to ask him, when did you become blind? The restaurant that Luo Jingyuan had booked was called Jin Kong Restaurant, and its level of luxury was equally impressive. The owner of the restaurant personally welcomed them from outside. Mr. Luo, the heaven-class private room has been prepared for you. Shall I take you there personally? Luo Jingyuan nodded, then turned to look at Yi Feng and Yi Feng. Brother Yi, are you satisfied with my arrangement? If you're not satisfied, we'll go to another shop. Yi Feng could not help but smile bitterly. It's just a meal. Is there a need to mobilize so many people? 
Luo Jingyuan chuckled. It depends on who you're eating with. If it's someone else, you can just find a random restaurant on the street. But for you, Brother Yi, of course, I want to treat you to the best. As he spoke, he hurriedly asked Yi Feng to go first while he himself was half a step behind. From this small detail, one could see how much he valued Yi Feng. The customers who were eating in the restaurant watched in surprise as this group of people went up to the second floor. If I'm not mistaken, that person just now should be Mr. Luo Jingyuan, right? That's right, Mr. Luo Jingyuan from Longjiang Real Estate. I saw him from afar when he came to our company for an inspection. Who is that young man beside Mr. Luo Jingyuan? Seeing how respectful Mr. Luo was to him, he probably has a powerful background, right? I really don't know him, but to be valued so highly by Mr. Luo Jingyuan, he must be the crown prince of some super big family. He's so handsome and rich. He's simply the benchmark of a high quality man. Don't be infatuated. No matter how high the quality is, it doesn't belong to you. Can't you see how beautiful the girl beside him is? If you can't get it, can't you just fantasize about it? Lu Xiaoya followed him into the heaven class private room. From the restaurant owner's fawning attitude toward Luo Jingyuan, one could tell how influential this brother Luo was in Yang Cheng. The reason why she came to Yang Cheng this time was because she was afraid that Yi Feng would be in danger. After all, this was Nyo Sidon's territory. Yi Feng did not have any foundation in Yang Cheng. Once he encountered danger, it would be very difficult to resolve. Her grandfather had some influence in Yang Cheng, so he might be able to help. But now that she saw the relationship between Yi Feng and Luo Jingyuan, she immediately knew that her worries were unnecessary. With a heavy burden free from her mind, she returned to her usual carefree personality and chatted and laughed with the two of them. As for Yi Feng and Luo Jingyuan, they were chatting and laughing without restraint. Brother Yi, I heard that you came to Yang Cheng this time to participate in the auction of Nyo Sidon's assets? Luo Jingyuan put down his chopsticks and turned to look at Yi Feng. That's right, I want to bid for Nyo Sidon's house. Yi Feng did not hide anything from him. He immediately told him his purpose. Are you planning to settle down in Yangcheng? Luo Jingyuan's interest was piqued. I haven't thought about it yet. Yi Feng shook his head. Since you don't plan to settle down in Yangcheng, why do you suddenly want to buy a house? Nyo Sidon's house must be quite expensive, right? Luo Jingyuan was confused. The main thing is, I heard from a feng shui master that the feng shui of Nyo Sidon's house is very good. So I suddenly had an idea and wanted to buy it first. Yi Feng did not want to announce King Xiang's secret treasure map. He could only make up an excuse. Brother Yi, you believe in geomancy? I thought you youngsters would scoff at such superstitions. Luo Jingyuan was amused by his explanation. This thing can only be believed to exist, not to not exist. There's no harm in being more careful. Yi Feng continued perfunctorily. Luo Jingyuan nodded and suddenly looked at him solemnly. However, I have to remind you of one thing. Although Nyo Sidon is dead now, his influence in Yang Cheng is still very great. For example, Wei Changfeng had received a great favor from Nyo Sidon back then. You must be careful when doing things. Don't fall into their trap. Ye think not that. Many thanks for Brother Luo's reminder. I will definitely be careful. Luo Jingyuan patted him on the shoulder. But you don't have to worry too much. I've made such a big scene to welcome you today because I want to send a signal to them and let them know about our relationship. If they want to make a move on you, they'll have to think twice before making a move on you. Yi Feng was touched when he heard his words. Thank you, brother Luo. Luo Jingyuan rolled his eyes. You're treating me like an outsider. What's there to thank me for? I'll punish you with a glass of wine. Don't ever say the word thank you to me again. Yi Feng quickly apologized and drank a cup of wine in one gulp. Luo Jingyuan smiled again. Brother Yi, I'll show you around Yangcheng later. You guys can familiarize yourself with the environment first. Then, before he could finish, the door of the private room was suddenly pushed open. A bodyguard in black and sunglasses walked in quickly. Mr. Luo, something bad has happened. Luo Jingyuan's face darkened. I've already said that I'm here to welcome my brother. Even if it's a big deal, don't bother me. Are you deaf? Get out. The bodyguard hurriedly wiped his sweat. Mr. Luo, Butler Chun just called and said that Mrs. Luo accidentally fell 
and has been sent to the hospital. Luo Jingyuan's expression changed drastically. He hurriedly stood up from his seat. What did you say? Which hospital? How was the situation? Is it dangerous? She's been sent to the third hospital of Yangcheng. I heard from Butler Chen that Madam has lost a lot of blood, and her condition is very critical. Luo Jingyuan didn't wait for him to finish his sentence and rushed out in a hurry. When he reached the door, he suddenly thought of Yi Feng and the other two. He quickly turned back. Bro, brother Yi, I'm afraid I can't accompany you. Your sister-in-law, she? Due to his emotional ups and downs, his speech was somewhat incoherent. The impression he gave to Yi Feng was that he was always laughing and smiling. He was very heroic. This was the first time he had seen such panic. It could be seen how flustered he was at the moment. Brother Luo, you don't have to say anymore. I'll drive you to the hospital myself. After saying that, he grabbed Luo Jingyuan's arm and rushed out. Yi Feng once again displayed his godlike driving skills. He pushed the Bentley's speed to the limit and sped through the dense traffic. It would have taken them more than half an hour to get there, but he only took less than 10 minutes to arrive at the third hospital of Yangcheng. Good brother, good brother. Luo Jingyuan patted him on the shoulder excitedly. He didn't have time to praise his driving skills and hurriedly pushed open the door to get out of the car. Yi Feng and Lu Xiaoya quickly followed. Just as the three of them ran to the entrance of the hospital, they saw an old man walking up to them quickly. Mr. Luo, you're finally here. Come in with me. Luo Jingyuan quickly walked inside. Butler Chun, how is Madam's condition now? The old man hurriedly replied, she's still in the midst of emergency treatment. The doctor said that he has to get the family members to sign it. I can't do it for her. The four of them rushed to the emergency room on the second floor. Luo Jingyuan immediately rushed up and knocked on the door. Open the door. Let me in. Soon, a male doctor in a white coat walked out of the operating theater. What are you filming? What is this place? How can you barge in? Luo Jingyuan hurriedly grabbed the doctor's arm. Hello, doctor. I'm Fan Chi's husband. How is she now? The doctor immediately took out a folder. You're finally here. The patient's condition is not good. She's an older pregnant woman and belongs to the high-risk group. Now that she accidentally fell, we need to perform a cesarean section on her immediately. Hurry up and sign the form. Luo Jingyuan hurriedly took the surgery consent form and signed his name on it. Because he was too flustered, his hand that was signing the papers kept trembling. The doctor took the folder, turned around, and entered the operating theater. Luo Jingyuan's legs gave way, and he almost fell. Yi Feng reacted quickly and helped him to sit on a chair at the side. Brother Luo, don't worry too much. Sister-in-law will be fine. Last year, she suddenly told me that she didn't want our Luo family to have no descendants and wanted another child. At that time, I told her that she was already so old and it was very dangerous for her to get pregnant. However, she insisted on it again and again. So I agreed. Who knew? At this point, he suddenly slapped himself twice. I'm A-B asterisk starred. I'm too selfish. If anything happens to Fan Chi, how am I supposed to live? Yi Feng hurriedly grabbed his hand. Brother Luo, don't be like this. Things are not that bad. At this moment, Old Master Luo also rushed over. Ai Yuan, how is Chi Chi? Luo Jingyuan hurriedly wiped away his tears and helped his father to sit down on a chair. Dad, it's fine. Don't worry too much. How can I not worry? She was about to carry my eldest grandson. So why did she suddenly fall? Old Master Luo was obviously more concerned about his grandson. After all, he was the only descendant of the Luo family. If anything happened, the Luo family would end up without any descendants. Luo Jingyuan was in a mess and was not in the mood to comfort him. He could only walk back and forth in the corridor. After a while, the emergency room door suddenly opened again. This time, it was a female doctor. Which one of you is the patient's family member? Luo Jingyuan and Old Master Luo walked over together. We're family members. How's the patient now? The female doctor shook her head. The situation is not optimistic. The patient is showing signs of massive bleeding. We can only save one now. Can you discuss whether to save the big or the small? When Luo Jingyuan and Old Master Luo heard that, they felt as if the world was spinning. The female doctor was a little anxious. 
The patient's condition is very critical now. You'd better make a decision quickly. Otherwise, you might not be able to save both of them. Luo Jingyuan gritted his teeth. Protect my wife. Old Master Luo was anxious. Protect the child. Luo Jingyuan looked at him angrily. Dad, are you asking Chi Chi to die? Old Master Luo also glared at him. I think you want our Luo family to have no descendants. Luo Jingyuan suppressed his anger. Dad, I can still have another child if we lose it. But Chi Chi has been in our family for more than 20 years and has always done her best to run this family. You should have seen it. Old Master Luo was so excited that his beard was trembling. How old are you guys? If this child is gone, how can you have another one? Chi Chi is a good child. Of course I see it. If there is a 1 in 10,000 chance, I naturally hope that both of them can be saved. But my Luo family can't have no descendants. Luo Jingyuan was too lazy to waste any more time. He quickly turned to the doctor and said, I'm the patient's husband. I have the final say. Old Master Luo slapped him. I'm still your father. If you don't protect this child today, I'll jump off the building immediately. Dad, can you stop forcing me? Luo Jingyuan was on the verge of collapse. Son, you're forcing me. If I can't have a grandson, I won't die in peace. Old Master Luo's eyes were also red, and his excitement was indescribable. Just as the two of them were arguing, a nurse suddenly ran out of the emergency room. Dr. Jiang, it's not good. The pregnant woman's bleeding can't be stopped. The female doctor let out a long sigh. You don't have to fight anymore. I'm afraid both of them can't be saved. Luo Jingyuan felt as if he had been struck by lightning. He fell to his knees with a thud. Doctor, I beg you. You must save her. I will give you whatever you want. I will give you all my assets. Please save her. The female doctor shrugged helplessly. It's useless even if you beg me. I'm a doctor, not a god. I can't do anything about it. When Luo Jingyuan heard this, he felt a heat in his chest and spat out a mouthful of blood. It was only at this moment that he realized what despair was. Even if he was rich and powerful, he was powerless in the face of life and death. Just as he was dizzy and about to faint, suddenly, he heard a voice behind him. Otherwise, let me try. To Luo Jingyuan, this voice was like the sound of nature. He turned around hurriedly and grabbed Yi Feng's arm. Brother Yi, do you have a way to save your sister-in-law? Yi Feng shook his head. I cannot guarantee it. I can only try my best. Old Master Luo finally reacted. That's right. Why didn't I think of that just now? Even my life was saved by Xiao Feng. He must have a way. Luo Jingyuan suddenly remembered. Wasn't this younger brother Yi of his just a divine doctor? How could he have forgotten when he was so anxious just now? All right, all right, all right. Brother Yi, I'll leave your sister-in-law's life to you. You must save her for me. I'll give you whatever you want. Yi Feng did not say anything else. He turned around and was about to enter the emergency room. At this moment, the female doctor suddenly stopped him. What are you doing? What is this place? How can you barge in? Ye Feng Fronet. I will go in to save them. The female doctor sized him up. Are you a doctor? Do you have a medical license? Yi Feng said angrily, You are a doctor? You have a medical license? Then why don't you go in and save people? If you can't save her, can't you let others save her? Move aside. The female doctor was still blocking the door. I'm sorry, you can't go in. If something happens, our hospital can't take responsibility. Luo Jingyuan was getting anxious. I'm the patient's family member. I agree to let him in to save the patient. Get out of the way. The female doctor shook her head stubbornly. He doesn't have the qualifications to practice medicine. You can't agree to it. Luo Jingyuan was furious. Why are you so cold-blooded? If you can't save her, why don't you let others save him? Do I have to watch my wife die here? His voice was so loud that it attracted the attention of many people in the corridor. At this moment, a man in his sixties wearing a white coat walked over quickly. Xiao Jiang, what is going on? When the female doctor saw this man, her attitude immediately became much more respectful. Deputy Dean Sheen, this man insists on entering the operating theater. She immediately explained the situation. Luo Jingyuan suppressed the anger in his heart. All right, I understand. As long as you can save my wife, 
Anything is negotiable. Deputy Dean Sheen looked troubled. I heard from Dr. Jiang that your wife has already lost a lot of blood. I'm afraid. There's nothing we can do. Luo Jingyuan couldn't take it anymore. He grabbed his collar and said, Are you F asterisk king kidding me? When others went in to save them, they wouldn't let them in. When they were asked to save them, they couldn't. Do you want me to watch my wife die in front of me? Sir, please calm down. Calm down? F asterisk CKU. If it's your wife lying inside, why don't you calm down? Luo Jingyuan exploded. He turned to Yi Feng and said, Brother Yi, go ahead and see who dares to stop you. The bodyguards immediately stepped forward and glared at Deputy Dean Qin and Dr. Jiang. The two of them did not dare to stop him. Yi Feng knew that he could not delay any longer. He went straight to the emergency room. Luo Jingyuan hurriedly followed him in. When he saw the scene in the emergency room, his eyes almost popped out of their sockets. His wife, Fan Shi, was lying on the operating table, her lower body bleeding nonstop. Her face was ashen, and her gaze was a little unfocused. The doctors and nurses had already given up on treating her. Two of them were chatting at the side, and two of them were even playing with their phones with their heads lowered. From the looks of it, they were probably waiting for his wife to bleed to death before announcing her death. Luo Jingyuan felt like killing someone. When the doctors saw the two of them rushing in, they immediately went forward and scolded them. Who let you in? What is this place? Hurry up and get out. Luo Jingyuan grabbed a scalpel from the operating table and swung it at the two of them. Whoever takes another step forward, I'll kill him. The two doctors immediately retreated in fear. At this moment, Dr. Jiang also walked in. Sir, please calm down first. Don't be rash. Luo Jingyuan looked at her with bloodshot eyes. Calm down? You guys watched my wife bleed to death and did nothing to save her. How can I calm down? Dr. Jung hurriedly explained, It's not that we don't want to save your wife, but your wife is bleeding profusely and we can't help her. Luo Jingyuan did not want to waste any more time with them. He quickly looked at Yi Feng. Brother Yi, hurry up and see if your sister-in-law can still be saved. Without him saying anything, Yi Feng had already walked to the operating table. First, he checked Fan Chi's vital signs, which were almost negligible. The first thing he had to do now was to hang on to her last breath. Otherwise, everything would be in vain. After sorting out his thoughts, he hurriedly took out the silver needle back. He had already developed the habit of carrying silver needles with him in case of emergency. He did not expect it to come in handy today. He first used silver needles on Fan Chi's Shan Shu, Kehe Shu, De Chang Shu, Guan Yuan Shu, Xia Kang Shu, and other acupoints. It was to ensure that her kidney chi would not be cut off. The next step was to stop the bleeding. The reason for Fan Chi's massive bleeding was the lack of contractions. The most important thing now was to strengthen her contractions. The most common way to strengthen the contractions was to use contraceptives or to use palace stuffing. However, with Fan Chi's current situation, these methods were obviously ineffective. He could only try a method from the green bag scripture medical skill called the Eternal Youth Hand. He first took out a piece of Lingji from his pocket and put it in Fan Chi's mouth to ensure that it could provide her with an endless supply of energy. Then, he slowly pressed on his bulging lower abdomen with a stimulating technique. When Dr. Jiang saw this scene, she didn't know whether to laugh or cry. I thought you had some solution. She's bleeding profusely. Can you stop the bleeding just by massaging her? The other medical staff also started laughing. When I saw him volunteer, I thought he had some magical medical skills. Is this guy here to cause trouble? How can there be such a way to stop the bleeding? Maybe he created it himself? Maybe it can really bring the dead back to life? Come on, if we can stop the bleeding with a massage, then aren't we a bunch of trash? Just as the few of them were making sarcastic remarks, a magical scene suddenly appeared. The blood flow was visibly reduced. Seeing this scene, the medical staff present were all dumbfounded. Wait a minute, am I seeing things? Why do I feel that the blood flow seems to have decreased? Your eyes aren't playing tricks on you. I also feel that the blood flow is decreasing. Oh my god, is his massage really effective? How is this possible? Isn't this too magical? We've tried everything, but it's useless. He stopped the bleeding just by pressing twice? Dr. Jiang was also completely dumbfounded. 
This was completely beyond her knowledge. If she had not seen it with her own eyes, she would never believe that someone could stop the bleeding so easily. Yi Feng wiped the sweat off his forehead. He turned around and scolded. What are you waiting for? Hurry up and do a C-section. If this continues, the child will really be lost. Only then did Dr. Jiang and the others react and rush to the operating table in a hurry. Only then did Yi Feng retreat. He sat on the chair and panted heavily. Although his technique was very easy, it was actually very taxing on his mental and physical strength. If not for his profound cultivation, he would probably have already exhausted his physical strength. Fortunately, after some hard work, he finally stopped the bleeding. He didn't need to do the rest of the delivery personally. Luo Jinyuan grabbed his arm nervously. Brother Yi, is your sister-in-law all right? Ye feng no detiredli. Sister-in-law is temporarily out of danger. Luo Jinyuan was about to kneel. Yi Feng hurriedly supported him. Brother Luo, what are you doing? Luo Jinyuan looked at him excitedly. Brother Yi, your sister-in-law is my life. If you can save her, it's equivalent to saving my life. I, thank you. Thank you? Yi Feng was a little unhappy. Brother Luo, you said that you wouldn't treat me as an outsider when we were eating just now. Why are you treating me as an outsider now? Do we still need to thank each other? Luo Jingyuan wanted to continue. At this moment, he suddenly heard the nurse beside her exclaim, The child's heartbeat has stopped. There were indeed no signs of life. Luo Jingyuan stared at the baby blankly, feeling an indescribable sorrow in his heart. This was already his second child. He did not expect that he would still be unable to keep it. Could it be that the heavens were destined to make him have no descendants? At this moment, Fan Shi, who had been unconscious, suddenly woke up. Please, save my child. Luo Jingyuan hurriedly walked over and grabbed her hand. Chi Chi, rest well. Child, we still have a chance in the future. Fan Shi immediately burst into tears. I want my child. Please, save him. Luo Jingyuan lowered his head in shame. He used to think that he was omnipotent. It was as if there was nothing in the world that he could not solve. Only now did he know how useless he was. He couldn't save his wife or his child. He was simply like a piece of trash. Yi Feng did not pay attention to the situation here. He lowered his head to check on the baby's condition. The baby's condition was different from old master Luo's. Because this child was born prematurely, his bodily functions were not perfect to begin with. In addition to the difficult labor just now, his body was even weaker. He couldn't use the treatment method he used on Old Master Luo. He frowned and pondered for a moment, then hurriedly took out a piece of Lingji from his pocket. He bit off a small piece with his teeth, chewed it into powder, and fed it to the child mouth to mouth. Then, he began to gently press his heart with his thumb. In fact, he did not have any confidence. Now, he could only try his best. Whether he could wake up or not would depend on his luck. Dr. Jiang and the others did not have any hope. Although Yi Feng had created a miracle earlier, they did not think that it would work this time, because the two situations were completely different. Although Fan Shi was bleeding heavily, she was not dead yet. This child had no signs of life. It could be said that he was already dead. Could the dead be brought back to life? Unless he was a perfected golden immortal. Time passed bit by bit but the child still showed no signs of waking up. No one had any more hope. Even Yi Feng was prepared to give up. At this moment, the baby's fingers suddenly moved, followed by a weak cry. Wah, wah, wah. Although his voice was weak, it was like the sound of nature. Everyone present widened their eyes in disbelief. He was really saved? Dr. Jiang and the others looked at each other. How is this possible? This child clearly has no signs of life just now. How could he have come back to life? My God, the hair on my body is standing on end. Isn't this too strange? Are we seeing ghosts? How is that possible? You're a doctor. Watch your words. How can there be ghosts in this world? But this can't be explained by medicine. A child who has lost his vital signs can actually be resurrected. This is indeed a little unbelievable. What exactly is going on? Luo Jingyuan didn't think too much about it. He scrambled over. Alive? Is he really alive? He had experienced several ups and downs in his emotions today, 
and he was on the verge of collapse. He wanted to reach out to touch the child, but he quickly retreated. The child's cries became louder and louder, and his vital signs became stronger and stronger. Only then did Yi Feng feel relieved. He turned around and passed him to Luo Jingyuan. Congratulations, brother Luo. You have a son. Luo Jingyuan trembled as he took over the child. He immediately burst into tears. I'm a father now. I'm really a father now. As he spoke, he knelt down toward Yi Feng. Brother Yi, you saved my father previously, and today, you saved my wife and child. Your kindness toward me is like giving birth to a new parent. From now on, I, Luo Jingyuan, will be your lackey. I am willing to go through fire and water for you, no matter what. His words were so sincere that Dr. Jiang and the others were dumbfounded. What lackey? What do you mean by going through fire and water? It sounded too scary. However, on second thought, it seemed to be a matter of course. After all, his entire family's lives were saved by him. This favor was really too great. He could do anything and say anything. Do you like this video? Let me know by giving it a thumbs up and leaving a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay updated on my future uploads.